Here he comes, or take from me that he don't pay for his wheel. No. He's the talk of us, but only when he'll take a vacation. He wants to be a star, but he lives still alive. He'd like to leave us, he would have to say goodbye. The posting on a talk show can be dangerous work. Good. From all the crap he has to take from assholes like you. George Rodriguez, George Rodriguez, the George Rodriguez Show! He works at radio, but that's okay, he's married, you know. A sexist Julio, but definitely not a homo. He's meticulously clean and proud to be a friend of mine! George Rodriguez, George Rodriguez, the George Rodriguez Show! You know, it takes all kinds of people to make America what it is today. It takes doctors. Hello. And lawyers. Hi there. Accountants. 27. And librarians. <laughs> but it also takes much more than that. It also takes America's morons. Use your signal, you idiot! <laughs> Good morning! You know us. Why, we're all around you. We're taking 200 items through the express lane of the supermarket. Oh, wait, let me get my other part. It's over here. <laughs> We're sitting behind you in the movie theater wrapping our Christmas gifts. <laughs> yes, the boo, yes, the boo. <laughs> and we're holding up your bank line while we try to cash a check from the Bank of Venus. Hey, pal, could you hurry it up? Fine, how are you? <laughs> we're the Association of Ignorant Americans, and we're always looking for new members. So if you hate any minority, don't read much, and just love to litter, then have a friend dial the phone for you and give us a call. Just dial area code 632-626-6766 or me, I'm a moron. Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm a moron. <laughs> it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, were you sleeping? <laughs> are you a moron? <laughs> America's moron. We're taking years off your life. 1002560 WQAM. It's the George in for Neil while Neil uh, wanders around Europe where he likes it because the people are nice. That's why he goes there. And that's why he wants to move there when uh, this whole thing is over. And that's why he uh, doesn't like America. And uh, that's why I played the America's Morons things. You know, we're going to have one final blowout about the shooting. Anybody who has something to say about it, you know, we're going to take care of it today because by next week and over the weekend, you can't watch anything on TV without having this story, you know, every time they find out something new, find a new bomb or get another picture, it, it comes up and you have to uh, you have to relive the whole thing all over again. And it's a tragic thing, and I'm not hiding from it or anything like that, but it's just we all know our media by now, and when something like this happens, they, they hyperventilate, they pee in their pants. So we, on this station, on this show, will exploit it for one more day because I've got my own take on it. I'm just as unqualified as all these other people that have been on the TV that have an opinion about it. So I'm just as unqualified as they are to spout about it, so I will. And, uh, and I've got my own uh, different angle on it. And uh, we're going to blow it out today, so hopefully by next week we can get back to happy horse crap and talking about it, you know, how much Keanu Reeves sucks and uh, shaving our nuts and, and things like that. Get back to a little bit of, uh, of fun because, uh, you know, we can't go back. There's nothing we can do about this situation. All we can do is look at it and uh and analyze it the way that everybody's been doing and i sure loved yesterday's show i sure loved that we had uh the two camps of people we had the um the gun lovers and the people who are freaked out by guns calling up almost it was great i couldn't have orchestrated it better since i don't screen the calls i don't know what these people are going to talk about i don't know what take they're going to have but it was almost like one then another then one then another a gun nut versus a gun hysterical person which i think both groups are silly because guns don't frighten me the way they do other people, nor do they fascinate me. I grew up with them the way that most people that don't live in big cities grew up with them. If you grew up in a rural area, guns were more likely than not a part of your life. And if you grew up somewhere where there were woods, hunting more likely than not was something that many people did. And it was something that, that I did. I never shot Bambi. I tried I ran through the woods with a gun in my hand looking for Bambi to shoot Bambi, but never found Bambi to shoot Bambi. I would have had no problem shooting Bambi, although I've eaten lots of deer, elk, bear, moose, you name it, while living in, in Montana. That's, that's the culture. That's what's going on. And we're going to talk about the gun thing and the non-gun thing 
Uh, but most of all, I'm going to talk about the anger thing. You hear the anger management and all that and about the parenting. Because something that I found out, and, and every time something like this happens, boy, all the experts, these so-called experts, climb out of the woodwork and I hear, you know, there, there are people blaming uh, MTV, there are people blaming Marilyn Manson, people blaming rock and roll in general, people blaming the internet, people blaming the, the neo-Nazis, uh, people blaming the TV. Did I already say TV? Well, it's, that comes up a lot. The video games, people blaming Doom because they play Doom. I don't know a teenager, I don't know anyone my age or younger that hasn't played Doom, except for me. I'm, you know, I came in just a little bit late to get into Doom, although all of my uh, you know, nephews play and have played Doom, and uh, guess what? They're not gun-toting maniacs. They're not going to kill anybody. And I've heard guns get blamed for it, um, which there's no question that guns are a dangerous thing. Guess what? They were designed to be dangerous. That's not by accident that guns are dangerous. That's that's the intention. That's why they invented guns in the first place, is so that they could kill people. And this is an outdoor insane asylum, this country. It's a madhouse. And, uh, and so be it. This is what we've got. This is where we are. This is America. And, and again, I'm not unhappy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Once again, thanks for letting me in the country. Madhouse that it may be. Outdoor insane asylum that it may be. I'm happy to be here, still. Um, and Neil mentioned it briefly yesterday. But when we were in Montana, we had a very active foreign exchange student program. I've mentioned that before. And one thing, no matter what part of the world these exchange students were from, and they came from all over, they came from the third world, the first world, the uh, nth world, they came from South Africa, South America, Europe, Sweden, Switzerland, all the uh, European countries. We had rich ones, poor ones, in-between ones. They all had different opinions about America and different reactions, but they all had one thing, one commentary they, they would eventually get around to, and that is, why are you people all pissed off? What are you people so pissed off about? Why are you fighting? Why are you arguing? Why are you attacking each other? Why are you uh, grouping yourselves together in gangs where, where the purpose of that gang is to commit violent or some kind of aberrant act against the other people? What are you so unhappy about? You have everything you want here. You're dry when it rains. When you're hungry, you eat. You can pick up the phone and order pizza, Chinese. You can go to the, to the theater. You have your choices, especially in the larger cities. They were making these commentaries about Libby, Montana, where there was nothing to do, nothing to do except go to the kegger. We had one walk-in theater, one drive-in theater, one place that delivered pizza, nothing that delivered Chinese. Uh, if you were lucky, you had a beat-up jalopy. One of these cats was driving a Beamer to, uh, to school. They lived in nice houses. What did they have to be pissed off about? What did they have to be angry about, except for the fact that they were picked on and uh, thrown against lockers by the jocks, which we'll talk about also, because that goes on. We've all seen it happen. And the, the larger the city and the larger the school, the more prevalent that kind of behavior is. And with all the spouting and all the talking heads and all the, 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 the pontificators that I've been saturated with on my TV for the past two days, the one voice of reason that actually inspired me was one of the students that got that escaped with her life one of the girls blonde girl and through tears and she was hysterical and I'm not going to mock her by by imitating her hysteria but her comments were I know a lot of you people out there feel that you're outcast she said I know a lot of you kids feel like outcasts but you don't have to be and the way she said it you know, she was, she was half crying, half screaming. You don't have to be. That was like the first and last reasonable thing that I heard in the wake of all of this. Because that's where it starts. And I'm not going to blame guns because I don't believe in blaming inanimate objects for anything that happens on planet Earth. You've got two forces at work on planet Earth. You've got the natural forces, the weather, the earthquakes, the things like that. And then you've got people. Between those two forces, everything happens on planet Earth. I've never seen a gun get up and shoot somebody. I've never seen a line of coke walk, crawl up somebody's shirt and stick themselves in somebody's nose. I've never seen a knife plunge itself into someone's chest. I've never seen a bottle of booze force itself down someone's throat. I've never seen a parked car start up and mow someone down. There are two kinds of problems. One are natural disasters, earthquakes, floods, hurricanes, uh, things like that, and the other unnatural disaster are people, pissed off people, messing with other people, f***ing with other people.
unhappy people. That's where it starts, unhappy people. And what the hell do you have to be unhappy about in this country? In this country, what do you have to be pissed off about? These kids didn't look like they were missing any meals. They didn't look like they, they needed anything or they wanted for anything. Their only big problem is they were having a problem finding acceptance. And because of that, and it didn't just, I mean, it wasn't an overnight thing, no question. All the uh, psychologists, now it's their turn. They're getting out there and talking about, you know, the parenting and everything like that. We'll talk about parenting today. I actually, I can, I can talk about that because I happen to be one. And I happen to be a damn good one. If I can brag about anything at all in my life, it's about that. And I take none of the credit for it. All of the credit that I take for that, I, I, I put at the feet of my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, who took me into his house when I was young because my sister was always my surrogate mother. She was, she was the person who watched out for me. And when she got married, uh, her husband joined right in. He could have had a totally different attitude towards my sister's pain-in-the-ass little brother, which I was. But instead, he took me into his house and he befriended me and he became a positive role model in my life and I owe all of my positive parenting skills to this man, and I'm going to talk about this man and positive parenting uh, skills and, and parenting in general. And obviously these kids, parents, you know, we can't blame them completely or something like that, but the, here, here are some facts. They were not involved in their children's life. And there's no question about that. And these children were unhappy people. There's no question about that. And, uh, and, and uh, yes, Joe, I see that you're... Uh, going crazy over there. Well, you know, we can, we can play fast and loose. We're going to, you know, violate the format, whatever. No, go back. I'll take the break right now. We'll, we'll spew all day long. 12 after 10 on 560 QAM. No portion of this broadcast may be reproduced without the express written permission of WQAM Beasley Reed Acquisition Court. All the white folks hate the black folks, and the black folks hate the white folks. To hate all but the right folks is an old established rule, but you're in National Brotherhood Week, National Brotherhood Week. Lena Horn and Sheriff Clark are dancing cheek to cheek. It's fun to eulogize the people you despise as long as you don't let them in your school. Oh, the poor folks hate the rich folks, and the rich folks hate the poor folks. All of my folks hate all of your folks. It's American as apple pie. But you're in National Brotherhood Week, National Brotherhood Week. New Yorkers love the Puerto Ricans because it's very chic. Step up and shake the hand of someone you can't stand. You can tolerate him if you try. Protestants hate the Catholics, and the Catholics hate the Protestants, and the Hindus hate the Muslims, and everybody hates the Jews, but you're in National Brotherhood Week, National Brotherhood Week, it's national, everyone smile at one and netherhood week, be nice to people who are inferior to you, it's only for a week, so have no fear. Be grateful that it doesn't last all year. I was mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. 1018 560 WQAM. Everyone's mad as hell. I don't know why. And by the way, um, I keep hearing lots of things in the wake of this thing. One of the things that I keep hearing is in this small town, this quiet, small little town, this was part of the Denver grid. It was a small town like West Miami is a small town. It was part of the grid. It was a suburb of Denver. This wasn't a small, isolated little town, which, if you want to know why that matters, people tend to be nicer in small towns. I've experienced it over and over again in various small towns. People tend to be nicer. My experience in a small town high school, having nothing to offer, by the way, not wearing the right clothes, not having a car at all, not having any money, I did just fine. No one bothered me. No one picked on me. I had friends. The people who weren't my friends were at least friendly acquaintances. And the people were on, who were assholes, we gave each other the appropriate amount of space. And, and that's as it should be, you know, because not everyone can not be an asshole, which, you know, if you're an asshole, go get help and stop right now because you don't have to be. You don't have to be. Understand something, that if you're flipping people sh if, if that's your idea of a good time, if that makes you feel better about yourself, you have a problem. Like the people who call here marauding all day long, some of them on the air, most of them off the air, who, who, who call me a 
thin spick because I won't pass their lay material along the needle because they don't want to wait on hold because they don't know what a talk show is supposed to be like. If, if, if that's your idea of going through life, you have a problem and you need to get yourself some help because the rest of us, which I do believe is the majority, we're doing just fine. We can accomplish happiness in our lives no matter what income level we're at, no matter what ethnicity we are. We can get along with other people no matter what income level they are, no matter what ethnicity they are. We're doing just fine with each other. And in most places around the country, I truly believe most people are doing just fine getting along with each other. But we do have this segment of the population. They're assholes. They're unhappy people. That's why they're assholes. And sometimes, in a moment of weakness, I'll star 69 one of these assholes and say, F*** you too! And, and uh, you know, and I shouldn't do that. But I'm a human. I have, I have weaknesses. I shouldn't do that because there's nothing I could wish on these people that could make their life worse than it already must be. Because happy people don't flip sh** to other people, like the jocks that were throwing these kids against the lockers. This, this all didn't just spontaneously occur. This is going on, the, the foundations for this type of an incident is going on right now as we speak in high schools and workplaces and post offices especially across the country. That's where it starts. That's where we have to focus our attention. You're not going to make the guns go away. If you could wave a magic wand and make all of the guns disappear because Lord knows there was no murder before there were guns. And there's no question that guns are dangerous. And there's no question that a gun in your house is more likely to kill you or a loved one than the, than the boogeyman that everyone's all afraid about. That's a statistical fact. Here's another statistical fact for you. Guns don't kill most of the people in this country. Most murders in this country are not committed with guns. <gasps> they, they, it has a plurality more than any other individual type of thing, but when you add stabbings and bludgeonings with baseball bats and strangulations with shoelaces and piano wire. Uh, poisoning is a big one. Pushing people off of cliffs, running people over with cars, etc. and so on. All of those things, all of these things added together are greater than the guns. And there was murder long before there were guns. Long before there was TV. I mean, isn't it great we're blaming TV and Marilyn Manson and the Internet, there were no bombs before the Internet. You realize that, right? No one knew how to make a bomb, a homemade bomb, before the Internet. Ted Kaczynski did not learn how to make bombs on the Internet. He was a genius. He took chemistry in college and learned how to make bombs. When we took junior high chemistry, by the time we were done with junior high chemistry, we all knew how to make bombs. I know how to make Two bombs, half a one. The Oklahoma City bombing was done with fertilizer and motor oil, the old farmer stump bomb. Now, if you made guns illegal and, you know, disappear from the face of the world, as if you could, as if you could. I love the conversations yesterday. Talk about, talk about pissing into the wind. Talking about making that. You're not going to take one gun away from one person. If you passed laws, any law you can think of, if you made owning a gun punishable by death, you're not going to take one gun away from one person. In prison, they make their own guns out of bed springs, whatever. They make zip guns. In prison, they're behind bars. They're locked up. They're, they have cameras on them. They have guards watching them. Guess what? They kill each other in prison every single freaking day. You're going to stop somebody from getting their hands on something they want to get their hands on, like guns or drugs or their own private parts? You're not going to stop a single individual human from doing anything that they want to do or acquiring anything that they want to acquire or from hurting another human if that's what they want to do. The question is, why do they want to hurt that other human being in the first place? And when the people start exhibiting the signs that lead to this kind of behavior because they didn't just, hey, we hate people now. Everyone around them knew that these were troubled people, except obviously the parents and the authority figures who were for some reason oblivious and not involved. No one paid any attention to these symptoms. And that's where parenting comes in. And that's where, you know, I want to talk about my brother-in-law, who from the time I was eight years old when I met this guy, he was involved in my life. And parents are totally disassociated with what their kids do because I don't know why, 
because I'm an overgrown kid. And I get a lot of crap for that from my friends for being immature. My Furby's sitting over there. We brought our Furbies in yesterday along with our daughters, those of us who had uh, daughters or Furbies or both. And I've gotten crap from my friends because of that, because I'm an overgrown kid. And I'm happy to be an overgrown kid because I can enjoy the things that my daughter enjoys on her level. And I don't intend to let that generation gap separate us. And I intend, if I can help it, and there's no guarantee, if I can help it to stay her friend forever, if I can. And the things that I enjoyed when I was eight years old, let's, uh, you know, she's 10 now. As the child goes through the various phases, do the things with your child that the child enjoys doing. Watch the stupid Disney movies with them. Play their stupid uh, shoots and ladders with them. Play Furby with them. Get involved in your child's life. There's no question. These children's parents were not involved in their life. My brother-in-law, when I was a little kid, he did whatever little kids did with me. When it came time to learn about guns, he taught me about guns and, uh, and uh, showed me how they're used, what they do, and appreciate the power of guns. He gave me my first knife. It was a mock Swiss Army knife. It was cheap, but nevertheless, he showed me how to sharpen it. He showed me how to take care of it. He showed me what kind of damage a knife can do so that I won't do it to myself or another person. And he was the one that took me hunting, fishing, canoeing. He taught me how to swim, all of these things. All of these things. He was involved with my life, and he had no reason to be. I was his wife's little brother, a pain in the ass, I might add, a spoiled, rotten little brat, a, a raised in a dysfunctional, hate-filled household little punk. I gave him every reason not to like me, and... He still hung out with me, and he still took me into his life and into his house and, and, uh, and showed me what being a human being was all about. And one of the things that he did is when a hate-filled word would come out of my mouth, he would ask me, why? Why do you feel that way? Why do you hate this person? Why are you using that word, that N-word, for example? Because that's the household that I was raised. I was raised by crackers. Like I said, I didn't know there was another word for those kinds of people until way later. Why are you so filled with bitterness? Why are you so filled with hate? Because whatever it is that you want out of life, whatever you want to get from the people around you, whatever you want to get out of life, the, the worst way to go about it and the least effective way, the least likely way to get whatever it is that you want out of life is to be hostile about it and to be hate-filled and to be angry and to flip sh towards people. That's the least likely scenario where you'll get what you want. What do you want? Fame? Fortune? Money? Whatever it is that you want, being hostile and hate-filled and angry is the least likely way that you're going to get it. That's, all that does is, is, is start the cycle of hate. And somewhere, sometime, these kids, they got started on the cycle of hate. I don't know if it was, if the jocks threw them against the locker first or if they were assholes first because this is all coming out now. This is what all the kids around them are talking about. They were outcasts. They were made fun of. The people in the school flipped sh at these guys, and they responded by, by separating themselves, by putting on the trench coats, by gathering in their little hate-filled group and nurturing the, the hate that each other had, and, and the cycle kept winding up, upward and upward until, until this happened. And if they had had no guns, there's no question in my mind they would have found another way. And everyone who does these kinds of things will find a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. Long before there were guns, MTV, rock and roll, the internet, there was murder. There were crazy people, angry people, unhappy people that would get to the point where they would go out and hurt other people. And that's what we should be looking at, especially in our kids and in the high schools. And everybody's got all these excuses. Now there's a euphemism for everything. Oh, he's an ADHD, so we have to somehow accept this kind of behavior from them or something like that. You know, I don't, I don't buy any of that. Anyway, sorry. All right, calls and, and like I said, today is the day for this, for this whole shooting thing. Next week, happy horse crap, 29 till 11. I mean, 29 after 10, whatever. On QAM. QAM drops the green flag with Motorsport Saturday. Saturday mornings at 6 with Joe Costello. Right here on Sports Radio 560. QAM. It's Dave! 
Miami town. At 560 WQAM. This line is for ticket holders only, please. Ticket holders only. Look out. Hey, I'm cutting in front of you. Hey, coming through. You can't do that. Hey, who do you think you are? Yeah. Me? Yeah. I'm an obnoxious butthead. <gasps> Oh, sorry. Yes, you know them well. In fact, you encounter them hey, every day. Hey, you just parked in front of my driveway. What are you, a butthead? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, sorry. I'll just uh, back out over my lawn. We call oh, them buttheads, but they're actually the unfortunate victims of cranial rectosis, a condition which causes people to lose all feeling for others simply because their head is jammed up their... Well, you get the picture. Uh, excuse me, but this is a no-smoking section. So, what are you going to do about it, cupcake? <laughs> Don't do anything. He's a terminal butthead. <clears throat> a public service reminder from the committee to replace lab animals with buttheads. 26 to 11, 560 WQAM, and uh, yeah, sorry, sorry I was so uh, droning and long-winded. One last day. Call up, vent your spleen about this issue, so next week we can get back to uh, happy horse crap, because that's what it's all about, happy horse crap. Virginia Key, hello. Hi, George. This is Tom. How you doing, Tom? Uh, i got two, two points to make. Yeah. Ah, that's how it's good. Uh, the first point is we allow our kids to beat up our other kids at a pretty early age. Yes, they do. And, yes, they do. And and as a matter of fact, it's going on in my neighborhood with my daughter, the next door neighbor, not only is the dad crazy, but the mom lets the older children beat up on not only their own younger children, but the other younger children in the neighborhood, they intervene never. It's never exactly. ever, and the, ever. Problem is, the problem is the, the kids don't know any better, and the parents who should know better... When you no, the kids do know better. That's already a problem. Are, that's already a problem that's yeah. going on in that kid's life, because yeah. you know what? Normal children do not beat up on other children. That's right. But, but normal children sure have better supervision, obviously, than that, that kid's obviously, getting. But that's, that's the stage at which the parents need to get involved. When your child right. is beating up on another child... Your child has a problem. The problem isn't that the other child can't defend itself. The question should be, why is my child an asshole? Right, and right. And what can I do to, to prevent that, to reverse that right now? Right. I think one of the problems is, is kind of the opposite of what you're, and you agree, I think you agree with me, is, is that the parents should never get uninvolved with the kids. Absolutely. And that's one of the biggest Absolutely. problems. I don't know, and it happens at different stages in different families, but the kids and the parents, they grow apart and... and they start living in two different worlds, and right. they're, they're, you know, pontificators talking about that on TV a lot. Well, the second, the second uh, problem you were asking, you know, why these things happen, one of the big problems is why this happens, is, especially in places like that, those kids have no reference for knowing what, what hard work for food, water, oh, like there's no is, question. There right? is no question. And they we, had a website. We discussed this before. During the break. Websites cost bucks. This right. kid had a website and a right. Beamer. Right. We, and we've discussed this before. I've actually had this discussion with you and, and Neil in the past. And one of the things that I would suggest in this country to pull up their bootstraps and actually make the kids go through an extra year of high school and on their junior year of high school, they either do one of two things. They have a choice of either going into the military for a year or going into the Peace Corps for a year. And that way, or wouldn't be a bad idea because at least then they'll get to see how other people have it, right? And why right. they shouldn't be such spoiled brats, right? Because even in the in the first world nations, they don't have the kind of at your fingertips luxury availability that we have over here. No, our, our first world fantasy is ridiculous. And, oh yeah, but uh, you know, I really think, and, and the only reason why I offer the military also is because when. Even before I was younger, there were trade schools. I mean, you could become a carpenter, you know. Right. You could, but but for a lot of the it, for a lot of kids, that's not an option. And 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 fortunately or unfortunately, the military offers them an option of getting out of the house if they're in a bad situation. They can go into the military when they're 18, and, you know. And if they have to, it's not a, it's not a yeah. great I way. Think of doing for things, a lot of these kids that have attitude problems, that's a good way to straighten their act right out. Right. And and I think that having that option of one or the other is is good for for both situations and I think that it would be good for the, the entire generation of, the, of this country. All righty then. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. 22 till 10 Hollywood. Hello. Hollywood. Good morning. How good are morning. You? Doing well. Hope you give me the opportunity. I'm going to be a little all over the place here. Okay. Okay. So I don't brief and I don't fast. feel Okay. I don't feel children have changed at all. I think it's the parents throughout this whole country that have changed our, our total attitudes towards raising our kids. That the main thing right now is to make money, make money, make money. Right. And the people that don't have the money want the money, and the people that have the money substitute love with BMWs, computers, and all this other crap. And, and that's the bottom line around here. 
In other words, we don't know how to parent our children whatsoever. You hit it on the head. Your brother-in-law raised you basically and gave you values. But parents are too darn busy he now making fun. How are you going to give your children value when you don't spend time with them? They you don't know what their interests are. You, you, you diss what they like. You resist them at every turn. Well, they're out there making money. That's the bottom line, the dollar. Yeah, you know? I'm out making money, too, but you know what? I'm not yeah. on the whole day. There's the evening. There are the weekends. Do you know the largest crime rate? I, I happen to know because I talked to a, uh, a cop in, in uh, Carl Springs, which is very affluent, okay? They get the largest juvenile crime rate in the state of Florida. Yeah, Carl exactly. You know why? And why? Because all why? mommy and daddy are out there working with the, and getting the Beamer in the garage, and it's like totally nuts. These kids... You can't substitute love and understanding for money. You know, when I was a little kid growing up, okay, these times have changed. I, my whole family was in my neighborhood, not just my mother and father. I right. had my uncles, my grandmother, my aunts, my mm -hmm. uncles, my cousins. Everybody was together. But people have gotten, in this country, they get promoted. They go, one goes to California, right. one goes to Nebraska. Yep. So nobody's together. And the families that are together aren't together because they're out there making money. So That's the bottom the American line, fucking way. You better believe it. This has basically ruined our country. Right. We don't know how to raise kids Thank anymore. You, There's no more values. Thank you, sir, very much. Have a good day. And uh, you too. And that's one thing that the Cubans all live within a square mile of each other for that reason. And uh, people just the Cubans because uh, uh, the son or the daughter will stay inside the house until they're married, which, which I think is nuts. I mean, I was out when I was 17. Get me out of here. But, of course, my mother was a crazy person. Where did I run? To my sister and my brother-in-law. Those are the people I wanted to hang with and be near. That's why I went back to Montana after I graduated from the very cold and unfriendly South Miami uh, Senior High. And, and thank you to all of the people who did eventually befriend me about a month before graduation. And that's how long it took. That's the difference between a small-town high school and a large-town high school. It's not just the parents. I mean, it starts with them. I mean, the kids have got to learn it from, from somewhere. But then these teenagers, they're hostile to each other. They're cliques, and, uh, and they're marauding all the uh, outcasts and things like that. And, what, and one of the things, that as parents, you've got to tell your kids is uh, make them aware of what kind of a world they live in, where people are lunatics, where they do have guns and bombs and have the ability to get both. So the next time you think about throwing somebody up against the locker, Bear in mind, he could be blowing you away the next day. You know, if you're not going to be nice to people for the right reason, which is just you should be nice, that's the right reason, is because we should all be nice to each other. But if you're not going to be nice to each other for that reason, why don't you do it out of fear? Because the person sitting next to you is a potential lunatic. The person sitting next to you, you don't know what they've been going through every day of their life up until this moment. You could be the person to set them over the edge. You know, so just... Maybe if we walked around with that kind of an attitude, instead of uh, marauding all these people. One more. I know. I'm sorry. It's a long-winded thing. Mobile and Homestead. Hello. Hello, Mobile and Homestead. Listening to the radio. Yeah. Hey. How you doing? All right. Yeah, George. Uh, I was listening to Neil yesterday, and uh, when he said something about the guns, it sounded like everybody was down on the guns, and just the point. It, it went made... both ways. It was like a tennis match yesterday with the guns. Exactly. But the way uh, the way you, you're describing it today is exactly right because I was when I was watching the news the other night they had this young girl on there that uh, her mother give her and told her she couldn't go out or whatever mm -hmm. and she ended up going into the kitchen getting a butcher knife and, and stabbing uh, her and stabbing her 20 times exactly That's well she started to cut her throat and right. then uh, right. yeah and then she stabbed her and then uh, killed her somebody kills you with a knife or strangles you you're just as dead it, as exactly right and uh, when they called up yesterday about the hunters uh, most hunters are I don't hunt. I mean, I, I, I'm like Neil. I couldn't bring myself to killing a, a deer or something. You know, That's I, the easy well, part. You know, shooting the deer is the easy part. Then there's the... Well, yeah, you know, it's, it's, not, my, it's not my cup of tea, but to tell somebody else that they can't do that. And, I mean, they, I'm, I'm sure they, they go through, you know, times when they get out there and they don't see anything or whatever. But, mm -hmm. still, the bottom line is, is, you know, people are free to do whatever they want to do. And if they think that guns are, are bad or whatever, I'm not a gun nut either, but, um, you know, they shoot cows with 22s in the slaughterhouse. I mean, but, um, you know, people want to do exactly what they want as long as they don't harm anybody or, or whatever. I mean, it's, you know, there's probably no harm in that. And, okay. it, and basically, if you do have a gun or a knife in the house, I mean, if they ban the guns and they're going to go next to the knives and, and um, what you said the other day about the uh, dress codes, uh, when my kids went to school, I think my youngest son went to school with you, but... Uh, Mm -hmm. When the dress codes were here, uh, for even all of us old guys and stuff, I mean, you, you'd dress in something decent, but, 
I mean, trench coats, that's a little bit too far fetched. That's Whatever. probably how they get Whatever. stuff happening. Trench coats you know? didn't kill anybody. Thank you very much, sir. We're late for the break. Trench coats didn't kill anybody. The uh, clothes these kids were wearing uh, didn't kill anybody. 17 till 11, 560 QA. Am I to understand there will be no sad dishes? There was an old farmer who lived on a rock. He sat in the meadow just shaking his fist at some boys who were down by the creek. Their feet in the water, their hands on their marbles and playthings, and at half past four, there came a young lady. She looked like a pretty young creature. She sat on the grass. She pulled up her dress and she showed them her rumbles and laces and white fluffy duck. She said she was learning a new way to bring up her children so they would not spit. While the boys in the barnyard were shoveling refuse and litter from yesterday's hunt. While the girl in the meadow was rubbing her eyes at the fellow down by the dock. He looked like a man with a sizable home in the country with a big fence out front. If he asked her politely, she'd show him her little pet dog who was subject to fits. And maybe she'd let him grab hold of her small tender hands with a movement so quick. And then she'd bend over and suck on his candy so tasty made of butterscotch. And then he spread whipped cream all over her cookies that she had left out on her shelf. If you think this is dirty, you can go f*** yourself. 11 till 11, 560 WQAM. Joe and I were talking during the break about a conversation he had with his girlfriend. Very nice, but uh, obviously, you know, grew up the, uh, the rich bitch uh, style. And I, I've dated, you know, the rich bitch before. And, and same thing. And, and they say things like, I remember when, remember when 90210 was first starting to come out. I remember the first promo that I ever saw for it. And they said, you know, just because you're rich and live in Beverly Hills doesn't mean that you don't have problems too. And I went nuts. You're rich and in Beverly Hills, and you're going to talk about your problems to me? You f***ing asshole. You're driving beamers to school, and you're going to tell me about your problems. But you can't talk- substitute for love. And, you, and the point that you made in response was very accurate. You know what? Poor people, they have a love deficit in their childhood also. Not all of them, but, you know, they just also don't have the ability to buy food or, or get to school without hoofing it for two miles uh, or, you know, or sitting on the bus. Or go to school at all. Or go to school at all. I mean, I'm just talking about in this country. I mean, forget about it. These spoiled, rotten brats. You know, what did they have to bitch about? Um, they were talking about with one of their friends last night. I mean, it was all over the place. You couldn't escape it. And one of their friends was saying, well, you know, they didn't have any girlfriends or anything. I, there, there's problem number one right there. I guarantee you, if these cats had been getting laid, they wouldn't have been angry people. Joe Castello, you've just had an orgasm. Are you happy or unhappy? Pissed off gets me fu- I'm very happy. You're very happy. You're the most harmless son of a bitch on the planet, aren't you? I don't know what Indian tribe it was. There were 500 of them before we killed them all. But uh, it was the saying uh, of one of these tribes, one of these American Indian tribes, that the ultimate state of bliss, of happiness, is when your stomach is full and your balls are empty. And boy, I've tried to take apart the logic of that, and I have to surrender. I wave the white flag to that logic. I can't imagine. Oh, I've got the pager going on in here. One moment, please. Obviously, somebody was using the phone. Um... I can't imagine a, a more uh, content state than that at whatever income level you're at. I've, I've achieved that when I was poor, and I've achieved that when I'm now not so poor. And you know what? Just as good. No better, no worse. It's just, it's all good. It's all good. So I guarantee you these kids were not getting any see. You know, maybe they didn't want any. Maybe that was their problem, like all these little gay Julios that call Neil all day long. That's their problem. That's why they're so filled with hate. They're homosexuals who can't come to terms with it, who cannot admit to themselves that they want that they want to suck, and that's why they're hostile, and that's why they call up Neil and, and vent at this gay man and call him up over and over and over again. We won't be talking to you people ever, by the way, all you little gay Julios out there. But if you, if you would admit that you're gay and get to the club and find other gay people that you could have gay sex with, hot gay sex, you would find happiness. 
and then you wouldn't have to bother other people. It's as simple as that. When you have the ability to find something that makes you happy, you don't bother other people. And if bothering other people is what makes you happy, you have a problem. You need help. You need to go see a counselor if you're in high school. You need to talk to mommy and daddy. You need to go see a psychiatrist. You need to do something because not being able to find happiness in America, I, I can't imagine it. Why don't you go, go to Bosnia, go to Kosovo, and talk to some of those refugees about your problems? Yeah, I drive a Beamer to school, but the jocks pick on me. You know, and, and again, I don't know where it started. I don't know where it started. We had jocks everywhere I was, even in the big South Miami. They didn't pick on me. I, didn't, I never gave anybody reasons to pick on me. I just, you know, I kept to myself, I was innocuous. I was the invisible man in high school down here, my senior year, which was, which was bothersome to an extent, but at least I wasn't somebody that people went out of their way to mess with. So I guess, you know, whatever, I'll take neutrality over hostility any day of the week. So I don't know what started it between these kids, this group of uh, kids, and the rest of the people. But there's probably a lot of blame to go all around. And again, I commend that girl who in her hysteria said, you know, you don't have to be outcasts. I know there are a lot of you kids out there that think, you know, that feel like you're outcasts, but you don't have to be. And that's, if, if anything's going to happen, if anything's going to start the cycle going the other way around, stop the cycle of hostility and hatred and start it going in the opposite direction. Because when somebody's nice to you, that brings your day up and you want to share that with other people. When somebody's harmful and hurtful to you, you want to share that also. That's just human nature. You want to pass it along. Whatever just happened to you, you want to pass it along. So, you know, it's got to stop somewhere. And, and everybody's got to stop it. Adults and children and the teenagers. And as adults, you've got to teach your children and your teenagers that, that the, uh, the, the way to achieve happiness is not by being hostile towards the people around you. That's not going to accomplish anything except generating more hostility. And then they will, you know, come back with more hostility. And then you'll come back with more hostility. And the hostility will build until it explodes in whatever fashion it will explode in. Poisoning, bombing, shooting knife stabbing 6 to 11 on QA and mobile and Del Rey hello mobile hey, how you doing George all right first time caller was on hold for a long time hopefully you give me a second yeah. uh, first of all I'd like to know uh, how old you are in the ages of your children because you you've been up on a soapbox about what a great parent you are and I've been wondering yeah. how long you've been doing that I'm 34 I'm 10 years old I'm also the uncle of nine children okay okay you're the uncle of nine that's great how old is your child she's 10 Okay, and, I was, well, and I was living with my uh, my sister and brother-in-law, the man that I hold up as a shining yeah. example of parenthood, while they raised all of their uh, four daughters. So I got to uh, be in the household and observe what George, good parenting is like as opposed George, to the bad parenting that I had in my life. Go ahead. George, we, we've been listening to that for the last right. 45 minutes. So First go of, ahead, sir. What do you have? It's, go it's ahead. a talk show, and part of that is your listening. Go ahead, sir. What oh. do you got? Okay. What I got is this. First of all, you're coming across like you're the all-knowing one. And okay. the, and Thank the, you very much, though. All he had was to take shots at me. I give him the opportunity to spew whatever he has on his mind. And, this, sir, this is a talk show. I'm the f***ing host. That's my job, is to spew about whatever is on my mind, whatever is on my chest, whatever is on my gut. I gave you a chance, and all you wanted to do is talk about me talking, so guess what you got? You got me talking some more. Here's the way a talk show works, asshole. You have material, you call up with it, I let you spew your material. But because it's the George Show today, I get to spew for four freaking hours. That's what it's about. Miami, hello. Hey, how you doing, George? All right. That guy, Major, he's an asshole. Of course he's an asshole. Listen, George, uh, this is not the maricon guy. Um, All right. This is what I have to share with this. High school, in a, in a sense, like my experience down here, see, I went to Coral Park, and Coral Park really sucks because it's like full of like, you know, it's the trendy mecca of Miami. But right. It's got all the spoiled right. Julio girls uh -huh. who, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't have enough money in the bank to get into their pants. Right. And what happens, it becomes a struggle. It's like a little cosmos, man, because it's like, the trendy people, the jocks, the people sure, who sure. have some kind of a position, like like in the hierarchy Very of high position. school. That's a, that's a big city thing, uh, predominantly. Yeah, and then there's, you know, like the, the motley people, you know, the people right. who, who have holes in their jeans or sneakers, i.e. whatever, you know what I'm saying? And, I mean, these guys are wackos, that trench coat, whatever, but right. in, a, in a sense, you can see where this is coming from. Anybody who went to high school in this country knows, like, 
the kind of persecution that goes on in high school. I mean, absolutely, it's, absolutely. It's like you go to learn, even though, like, I mean, once you get into college and you look back, you're like, damn, I was wasting a lot of time in high school. But when you're there, that's your little world. I mean, everything revolves right. around. You, you think that what? it's never going to get any better than that? What the, you know, they're very short sighted. These kids, you know, realize that when high school ends, guess what? You're going to go into a whole new world, and whatever happened in high school, that's gone. No, you know? no, absolutely. Everything in college is absolutely irrelevant. There is right. no more clicks. Right. And if there are, then you're an idiot, and everybody looks at you like, right. look at this immature asshole who's trying to recreate high school in the college environment, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, George, All thanks right. a lot. Thanks a lot. 3 till 11, 560, WQAM. <laughs> Like the guy that just called, uh, who doesn't know how a talk show works. 1102 on 560 WQAM. And uh, there aren't a lot of things in my life that I can brag about, but my parenting so far is one of those things. Because my daughter loves me, and I know she loves me. We have great times together. You know, and I... Don't think that I'm a perfect parent or anything like that. Just so far, so good. That's all. That's all. And I had two real good examples of parenting in my life. One was my mother, how not to be a parent. Perfect example of how not to, do, to be a parent. Did everything wrong. Totally selfish. Her children existed for her edification so that she could impress her friends. The only time that she took any interest in us is when there were people over so that she could make us jump through hoops and somehow impress her friends. Otherwise, she didn't care for us or care from us, or care about us. And then there was my brother-in-law, who was a good example of a parent because he became a friend. And, and by the way, also an authority figure. There was no question who was in charge. He never let that be a gray area, which is another thing that you have to do as a parent. And yes, I am going to spew here, sir, about parenting. Because guess what? It's the George show. We're not, you know, and, you, and you had your chance. That's how talk shows work. And as far as, you know, my expertise, no, I don't have any degrees and I didn't write any books like uh, Dr. Spock, who turns out he was a horrible parent and an asshole. None of his children have anything nice to say about him as a father. They all say he was full of crap, he was an asshole, we hate him. So I don't care how many books he wrote and how many degrees he has, because writing books and having degrees has nothing to do with actually getting down there and doing it and spending the time and taking the time with your children, which is what it takes. It takes time from your busy day. 11.04 on QAM, Miami. Hello. Miami. Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, city. Yeah, no problem. I don't know what that was about. Miami, hello. George. Yes. Hey, how you doing? All right. Hey. Well, uh, listen, uh, you know, you have people calling up and basically just giving all types of advice on how to raise kids, man. Sure. There is no one way. Of know? course not. You know, and, and uh, there's no one way, but there are, there are principles, there are universal yeah, principles uh, that apply. And like uh, I said, one of them right. is you have to be involved with your child's life. You have to spend time right. with your child on the child's level, doing things that the child enjoys doing at every stage, while they're a toddler, right. when they're you know eight, nine, ten, when they're a teenager, whatever. Right. You have I, to I, be I mean, there. You have to be one of their friends. That doesn't mean that you have to that you can stop being a parent or an authority figure, but you have to to be tight with your child so that so that when your child is starts getting into things like neo Nazism or, right. well, or, I, I mean, or things like that, you're you're at least aware of it and you can talk to your child about it and, and you know and get into why they feel that way yeah. and diffuse it before it explodes. Right. I, I mean if you're too strict with the child, I mean that's definitely they always do the opposite of what you want them to do. And uh, if, you, if you're too loose, you know, right. uh, and you don't have any supervision, so you've got to find that gray area that works for you. You know, keep them on a very, very long leash. Oh, don't, it, don't say gray area. Say balance. Balance. Uh, balance. Yeah. Uh, Certainly uh, you've got to give your kids freedom. And, and that's why it really bothers me when I hear all these people getting psychotic about rock and roll and video games and the Internet and things yeah. like that. Again, this is the world. You're right. not going to be able to raise your child in a bubble, in a rubber room, in a right. padded room. Absolutely. This is the world. You arm them I, with I, knowledge I mean, and tools I mean, so that they can deal right. with these things. I mean, basically, it, it, it's like a fire hose, okay? I mean, you can turn on you can, and you can seal off the tip. It's going to explode somewhere else. It's going to explode. It's like a, a, like, well, you said fire hose. That's my thing is like a garden hose, and that, right. that goes to sexuality. I haven't even started on that. And that whole uh, thing, Neil and Carl Sagan yesterday made very good points yeah. about 
you know, the parents repressing the, uh, the, the sexual desires of their children and making them feel dirty Absolutely. and making them feel bad right. about There's feelings a, that they're having that are just waking up. And, George, the, yeah. let, let, me, let me tell you, there are three things that really do not make me hostile. I mean, basically will en- eliminate all the hostility in me. Well, number one, like, you, and you came up with two of them. Like I said, a full belly, right. like a big plate of food. Uh, you know, uh, getting laid or, you know, right. basically squirt squirting, you know, whether uh-huh. you're getting laid by a woman or using your right hand, right. or uh, smoking a joint. You too, Jeff? Okay. Go or, ahead. or smoking a joint. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, like I said, I mean, you're absolutely right in that aspect, too. And as far as the media is concerned, you, you know, yell, jumping up and down saying this was all uh, racially motivated, yeah, sure, those, I didn't see one black kid. One. Like, not one. One, no, there was one. Oh, there was one. One. Yeah, most of them were white. He though. was, yeah. He was a jock. These guys were filled with a lot of hate against uh, blacks and jocks and Jews, and they're, you know, just all around hate. And, and shoving a microphone up to a kid that's just totally hysterical and just not letting them go. I mean. I know. Uh, all right. Thanks well, a lot, thanks, guy. Thanks a lot. You bet. Now, and and you, you do have to do the, the balance thing as the parent. You've got to give your kids some slack and some freedom. And then, well, first of all, understand this if you're the parent of a teenager, because. I'm not, but I remember what it was like to be a teenager. And guess what? Your teenager is going to do whatever the hell they want because you're not going to be there all the time. They're going to do drugs. They're going to have sex. And if their buddy has a gun, they're going to say, ooh, let me see that. They will, they will, they will. What you need to do as a parent, and the only thing that you can do, is prepare them for these situations and arm them with as much knowledge as you can arm them with. And you have a lot of parents out there telling their kids that sex is wrong and sex is dirty and even so far as touching yourself is wrong and dirty and you're, you'll go blind and, you're, uh, and you, you know, your hand will fall off. Teenage males need to be encouraged to, uh, to masturbate because there's, there's a pressure valve right there that if you're not letting out steam in that capacity, you're, you're a bitter, angry, hostile person. And, and, and also an unhealthy person. Isn't that right, Joe Castello? We probably shouldn't talk about your personal plumbing here on the air, but at some point we will. You need to start letting off steam in that, uh, in that area as a teenage male. There's no question that testosterone affects the male species, especially the teenage male who is just starting to feel the testosterone flowing through their veins for the first time in their life. And it's making them act uh, you know, all kinds of different ways. We all know testosterone makes you want to do one of two things, or fight. And if you can't do one, you want to do the other. So by all means, don't, you know, don't discourage your child from touching himself at the very least. And the parent of a male or female child, you should be talking to your children about sex and giving them condoms and not making them feel guilty about the feelings that they're having. You know what? They're going to have sex. They're going to have sex. They're going to have sex. I don't care if they're a born-again Christian. I had more born-again Christian than all the other kinds put together. Okay, they're going to have sex. And and all that's going to happen is if you made them feel bad about it, if you told them that it was wrong and it was dirty and it was nasty and they're, they're going to go to hell, they're going to still have sex because they're going to give in to their impulses because that's what kids do. And then they're going to feel bad about it and start developing self-hate and self-loathing and all this guilt. And that's bad. Don't make them feel bad about the feelings that are normal and natural and give them rubbers. And, just, and that's all that you can hope for, is beg them to please use the rubbers. Please, please, please use the rubbers. Look, I don't care what you do with them. I don't care if you blow them up and make uh, water balloons out of them. Uh, you know, make balloons and send them sailing off into the air. I, you know, I don't care if you use them for chewing gum. Just please, just have these things. Just carry them on you. Because they will have sex. Your born-again Christian teenage daughter is going to have sex. And they're going to do drugs. And they're going to play with guns because they're out there. And if you don't, and you know, and the same logic, the gun people, the anti-gun people, like the anti-drug people, not talking to your children about sex, not talking to your children about guns, not talking to your children about drugs, makes as much sense as, as all of the above. The gun people, they educate their children about gun, guns. They take little Jimmy out shooting when he's at a very early age. They make him appreciate the power of a gun, but then they don't talk to them about sex or drugs. And then on the liberal side, you have just the opposite. You have a uh, stoner mom and dad who are there for their kids. They, they don't make them feel bad about sex. They don't make them feel bad about drugs. They, they, they share openly and honestly with their children about this, but then they have no gun education for them. And these are the children that out of curiosity go and play with guns and they have no idea how a gun works, no idea what kind of damage a gun can do, no idea how easy it is for a gun to fire or misfire. 
And these are the children that here in the inner city that every day, every other day you hear about, oops, I shot my friend's head off accidentally. I can't imagine any of my friends in Montana, oops, with a gun. I was the one that when I went up there, I was the head who said, hey, let me see your gun. They said, we don't play with these things. They're deadly. That was what my teenage friends would tell me when I would say, ooh, let me see my, you know, let me see your gun. There's the curiosity thing there. They are going to play with the guns in South Miami Senior High, walking through the parking lot. There's the, there the guys are with their nice car, the trunk open, and they're showing each other their guns in the parking lot. And I didn't bat an eyelash because I had just come back from Montana. By that time, you know, what I, what I did think was they're making a big deal about guns, how childish, how immature, that seniors in high school are making a big deal about guns. Big deal. Big deal. I had shot so many guns by that time, there was no fascination left for me. Sorry, I get long-winded again. That guy's going to call back. Mobile in West Palm, hello. Yes, good morning, George. How are you doing? Doing all right. Uh, listen, uh, let me just give you a little story of uh, the copycats that we're going to be getting from this situation. We're going to be getting so many copycats. It just happened this morning with my daughter in school. Uh, this morning, I get a, my wife beats me. says, listen, something's going on in, in uh, our daughter's school. Can you please call and find out? Mm -hmm. I call her and find out of the problem. There already was a fight yesterday, and kids are now threatening themselves. I'm not going to mention the name because... It'll it probably make a big panic. Right, don't no, no, But right. here we go. They get they get they say they're gonna kill a kid. Yeah. Now the school I wanna make sure the school knew about it and right. because a lot of kids are afraid to even report it to the uh, to the principals, to sure. the to the places there because right. the kids are threatened. Yeah, they are they're, they're actually told if you whoever spills the beans and we thought that was you, we'll come after you. And they they don't do anything to these children. In the school, okay. they don't suspend them. They don't take them out. They don't put them in special programs. They need to be taken out of that school. The kids that are running around threatening people. Yeah, and they I won't do that. It's unbelievable. I want to know how many parents, the day after that terrible tragedy in Colorado, actually took the time to sit down with their children. I got three myself. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I didn't know all the facts the first day, but I sat them down and I said, uh, "Listen, did you were you aware of what happened today?" And they were oh, because good, they, good idea, sir. Thank you very much. We're late for the break. 11-13, 560-QAM. Give your brain the day off and listen to the big dog, Depot and Goldie. Mornings at 6, only on Sports Radio 560-QAM. Yeah, but let me say something for... Let me say something. My anus. 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 Hi, kids. Y'all like cutting little stinkers? Uh -huh. That funny little yeah. sound that comes right out of your sphincter? Want to copy me and do exactly like I do? Uh -huh. Get paid to write little songs about boo boo? Ooh. My brain's all gone. I'm trying to get my groove on. But I can't figure out which spice girl I'm going to fart on. Ooh. And Dr. Dre asked, Yo, man, you pass gas? Hell no. Well, why do I smell ass? Man, you low class. Well, since age 12, it seems like I always smell that thought ripping gases and tune was pretty swell. I got pissed off when I took my jeans off and fought it so hard and turned my underwear backwards like crisscross. And every night I'm like, oh, dinner at last. Then fun out my ass faster than a fat bitch who ain't too fast. Smell this, honey. Yo, dude, wait a minute. That's my girl, cuz. I don't give a f God sent me to stink the world up. My anus. 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 Teacher wanted me kicked out back in junior high. Said the problem was something crawled up my ass and died. I shot him in the face with my vapor. The worst happened later when I covered his desk with used toilet paper. Walked in the strip club, my intestines were filled up. Moved the bartender and took a dump in a tip cup. Went over to a dancer, had a buck in her garter. She lifted her leg up. And I knew she was a father. 99% of my life I was lied to. I just found out my mom got more gas than I do. Oh, I told her I'd grow up to be a famous rapper. Make a record about strange noises made on the crapper. You know you was dirt when the women rushed to leave. You tried to hold it back, but your butt needed relief. This guy at White Castle said it was pretty cool. But I had to go. Go drop the kids off at the pool. My anus. My anus. My anus.
righty then. 112560 WQAM, I promise. I will shut up for a while and let the audience spew for a change. Mobile in Dadeland, hello. That was gross. Anyway, yeah. hi, George. Hi. Uh, you know, what I was saying uh, before... Um, before when? To, uh, a couple of friends of mine that uh, these two uh, teenage murderers in high school were asking the girls in the library, do you believe in God? And they said yes, they would shoot them dead. Right. And so, they, you know, I, right. They, they said a lot of things. They were looking for jocks. They blew all them away. Right, they found the black right. guy. They you, said, oh, look, a nigger. Guys, forget and they blew him away. There's a lot of people who are so intolerant on both sides of the religious question. There's a lot of people who hate anybody who believes in, in Jesus or, or any kind of religion. And then, of course, there's a lot of Christians who hate atheists. So if people get you know, a little I, closer I, together... I, I hate to break the news to you, but throughout human history, the atheists haven't uh, gathered up all of the religionists and killed them on many, many, many occasions the way no, that the religionists true. have. Uh, that, that, killed that's people true. that didn't believe their hokum. I'm talking about here in the United States. I mean, I have a lot of... I'm, right, I'm and here in the United belong, States, again, it is the people to the who trump the Bible that are the most violent. People about the Christian coalition is like the devil itself, right. okay? Yes. hate mongers. And not all uh, Christians are hateful, okay? And they, just because... No, they're just confused. Was that it? Maybe they might be confused in your mind, but a lot of people believe that teaching maybe limited morals to atheists, they won't be killing people just because... Oh, okay, yeah, morals comes from the Bible, like killing all your enemies comes from the Bible. Genociding whole cities and murdering children comes from the Bible. You want to... And, and trust me, throughout history, they have used the Bible for mass murder. So don't hold up your religion and say that absence of religion... Is is uh, is the problem with these children's lives, and and that you know I don't know if they were atheists or what. I don't think their parents were. We don't know. We still haven't spoken about that. But you know, you think morality comes from religion? You're full of crap. Exploitation and corruption comes from religion. The atheists don't have morality. If we shared morality with the atheists, well, guess what? That you know, I'm an agnostic. The wife is an atheist. We teach our child uh, morality because it's common sense. We didn't have to teach her that at all. Everybody knows that. You don't bother people. If you're a normal person, and if you do something, whatever, you do something, and it makes the person next to you sad or mad, you did something wrong. That's how it works. And a normal, sane person will notice that the person that's sitting next to them has a sad look on their face or an angry look on their face, and that's how you know that your actions were wrong. When you do something and a smile comes across the person's face, you know you did something right. It's as simple as that. It's as ancient as the human freaking race before any of these religions were invented. Mobile in Fort Lauderdale, hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? All right, sir. Uh, I, uh, I have a slightly different opinion. I mean, obviously what happens Please is share. a tremendous... Uh, obviously whatever happens is a tremendous tragedy out in Colorado. Of course the kids it is. are are despicable human beings. Let's not state the but, obvious. Right. Okay, what I think, though, is that everyone's reaction a little bit irks me. I mean, I... It's a little snobby. All the knee jerks. That's what I call them, the knee jerks. Well, I mean, when you think about it, there's there's five times that number of people that were killed, killed every single day in Kosovo just because they happen to be born to a certain ethnic background. Right. There, there's... Uh, I mean, we don't care about them. That's, uh, right. you know, there's they're Kosovars. 15, they're Muslims. They're way over there. Exactly. That's way over there. There's 15 times that number of people that are starving to death every single day in Africa. Again, well, they're Africans. We don't care about them. I, 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 that just bugs me. I, I know people that are actually crying because, because this has happened. I, I can't believe this happened. Sure. There, there's 75 million students in this country. Uh, 15 kids got killed. That is a trap. I mean, imagine. I'm just sitting in your house. Imagine somebody coming in with a gun and realize, realize what would happen if somebody was pointing a gun at you. It mm -hmm. is a tragedy, but... I, I, it just it irks me a little just when I see people crying and so they don't get the bigger picture that this is this is just a minuscule thing that happens in the world. It, okay. It's the world. Thank you, thank you very much. You know, I, I mean, I don't want to agree or disagree with him because, but that's the way people feel when it happens here. Because we do like to think that uh, America is somehow better than all of these other countries, and I'm not going to argue that point. This is where I want to be. If I wanted to be somewhere else, I'd be somewhere else. But this is where I am. You know, but it shouldn't be going on. What's going on? You know, people starving in Africa and, and, and the bar barbaric behavior of the uh, Serbians and Yugoslavia has really nothing to do with the fact that we can't get along with each other over here. And we have spoiled, uh, they weren't rich, they were upper middle class, but we have spoiled kids who for some reason can't seem to get it together to, uh, to lead a happy life as if they have anything to complain about, as if the 90210 kids have anything to bitch about. 1125, lady in uh, Miami, hello. 
Hello, ma'am. Yes, hi. How are hi. you, George? Um, George, you know, as I was looking at this tragedy that happened, first of all, I'm sorry, good morning. Good morning. Um, about the kids. If you read, uh, if you have read already, I've listened to it, because I know everybody has, um, in there it stated that they were warned, the school was told by two of the kids that they were, you know, threatened by There the were kids. all kinds of warning signs. I didn't hear about any, th- any kind of a specific warning, but these kids had threatened other kids before. Right. Uh, you know, they had a website. They stockpiled all this ammunition. I don't know how. Well, wait a minute. That's part of it. I'm, I'm sorry for interrupting you. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. But, I interrupted you. No, that's okay. The, no, it's okay. the neighbors heard noises right. of the these kids feeling sure. something in its garage. Right. Where were the parents? What would a parent do? That's what everybody keeps asking, and we haven't gotten an answer from them yet. Well, you know what it is? They have lawyers, you know that, and they don't want to be seen on television. Well, you know, I, I mean, now you can't really blame them for that. I mean, well, let's let's uh, let's assume that the parents were f heads. Yeah. All right, they are going to do whatever they can to cover their ass at this point. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You're I mean, right what about what that. would you expect them to do? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, me personally, you know, I have three kids, and I'm yeah. just saying personally, I, you know, if I notice anything, well, you know, just coming in, I assume that you're a good parent, but let's just say you were not a good parent, and when one of your kids did something, I'm sure you'd want to cover your ass as well. Well, you're right about that. Protect yourself. You're right. All right. Thank you, man. Okay. 11:25 on QAM, uh, mobile in Key Largo. Hello. I promise I won't say ah anymore. George. Yes. Hey, speaking of uh, what you were talking about a minute ago about other places, I just. Uh, Came back from a couple of long trips, surf trips over in uh, in Brazil, in a little beach town that way out of the way out of the middle of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And another trip over into Indonesia near Bali, uh, again out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, it's like that guy was saying a long time ago uh, earlier in the show about money. Uh, I mean, the attitudes of people in other places are just they're living off whatever they can get. Uh, they got nothing, and they don't care. They're happy with it. They're doing there's the no, best they can. They're, they're, there's, but there's no there's right. no attitude of hate, and I'm better than you, and I can beat your ass kind right. of stuff that's over here. And they don't, you it's, know, when it's I not talk, everywhere over here. I've had wonderful experiences in some parts of the country. But I mean, I'm talking about where the where it seems like all the problems, like having to do with what's happened with this, have come from. And uh, it's just, you know, when I talk to them about what do you think about Americans, they just. They can't understand it. And they, they can't they understand of, it. That's why all the foreigners, the exchange students, visitors from other countries, they can't understand what we're so pissed off about in this country. Well, what what I think it is, it has to do with like I was talking about, is money. I mean, the the, the whole the whole but these thing. these kids had it. They had, you know, more than enough. They had money to put up a website. They had a the car. They had clothes. They had nice houses. I didn't have any of that crap when I was growing up. I did just fine. I mean, I wish I would have had that crap. Credit well, cards are expensive. I'm not saying that everybody's like that, but if there's just enough of that. I couldn't have society, afforded a trench coat when I was a teenager. Those were nice trench coats. But even 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 still, there's enough of that attitude going through society that even people that have stuff, they'll they'll just seem to have enough. the yeah, and they just. Uh, I think a lot of it too comes from some parts of. I don't want to say it, you know, in a way of prejudice, but the black okay. The what? Hello. All right, I guess that's it. Good timing, because it's time for a break. 1127-28-560-WQAM. Jim Mandich Talk Sports. Weekends right here on Sports Radio 560-QAM. Tremendous! And now the League of Retarded Citizens will prefer their rendition of Green Onion. Don't make fun. They work very hard for this. Twenty-six till twelve, five sixty. WQAM mobile and Kendall. Hello. Wow, and I have to follow that. Follow hey. what? How's it going, guy? Doing all right. Hey, um, first of all, you're doing a pretty good job. Thank you. Um, hey, listen, um, you know, the media has been labeling these two individuals as adolescents, and uh, I freaked out the first time I heard the news. Uh, wow, a couple of twelve, eleven year olds are out there shooting people. Right. And it turns out that one of them happens to be an adult right. whose father was a colonel for the Air Force 
Let me tell you something. This Colonel. has got to be like the dumbest, blind idiot. That I mean, this guy is, is fighting for our country. You know, he can't see that there was something wrong with his kid unless he's training him himself. You know, I mean, right. not 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 to notice anything. Well, like I said, they've got lawyers. They're not talking to anybody. It's uh, well, we, we sure don't they know do. about sure them they do, yet. Like you said to cover their ass. You know, everybody's jumping to conclusions, but right. you know, like I already have. I I know one thing, and and I'm gonna have a you know a hard time with anybody who wants to argue this with me. They were not a part of their kids' lives. They did not know what kind of children they had. They did not know what their children were into, interested in, what kind of their personalities their children had, uh, what kind of a level of happiness uh, their children were at, their state of mind. They were really obviously oblivious to all of these things. You really all of these things. That? Well, we have to believe it because that's the fact. And that's not rare or unusual in this country in this day and age. You know, that's that's very common. It might be the norm as opposed to the exception anymore. I don't know. Yeah. And you mentioned also about the, the fact that we're going to have a lot of the copycats. You remember a few years back when Alomar spit on the umpire's face? No. Hirschbeck? No. Well, uh, there was a baseball game and something happened uh, with Alomar and Hirschbeck, and he read back and spit in his face. Oh, well, the spit thing. I'm sorry? The spit thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. What happened, like... Days after that, some high school kid here spit right on the uh, right. on the face of his coach. Why? Because first of all, kids nowadays they don't have their own personality, and they and they are impulsed by what's happening around them and what they see on television and hear in the news. Yeah, but that's a uh, cop out. That's a cop out. I mean, there will be copycats and et cetera and so on. But you can't. We can't raise our kids in a bubble. I mean, no matter what we try to do, they're going to be influenced. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna see and hear what's going on around them. Yeah, but we all, you know what? A lot of kids, a lot of kids saw that incident also and said, "Hey, you know what? That's pretty disgusting. That's not something I would do." Or right. the asshole right. the, the would get the idea sense. to copy it. Someone who's already an asshole. He's already lost. He's already f***ed up. Oh, cool, cool, man. That's cool. I think. Uh, yeah. Like, like, like the guys. That Those are the kids that think that's a good the idea. Teacher. You remember that some some kids that killed the teacher? What what was his excuse? Oh, he wanted to feel what it was like to kill somebody. What kind right. of a crap is that? There you go. That's safe. I mean, this that's insanity, man. At, at it is insanity. Point. That's what I'm talking about, insanity. And by the way, thank you very much. Speaking about insanity, because I argue this with the wife all the time, that's a problem that I have with the criminal justice system or just, I don't know if it's our general philosophy or what. People like to make a big distinction between uh, crazy people, mentally ill people, and evil people, a.k.a. assholes. What's the difference? Either your brain works the way that it should work and you're a normal human, or it works some other way, or it doesn't work the way that it should, which makes you asshole, evil, crazy person. I don't care what you call it. Either, either seeing people happy makes you happy or it makes you sad. Either seeing people miserable makes you miserable or it makes you happy. Normal people want to see people happy around them. Evil, crazy, psychotic, whatever you want to call it, these are the people that enjoy causing grief in other people's lives. So I don't care what you call it, crazy. Uh, it's all crazy. It's all evil. It's all the same thing. And we have trials, and, and that insanity is some kind of a defense. How can that be a defense? That should be, you should be more guilty if you're insane. If you're insane, you're more dangerous than somebody who knows the difference between right and wrong. As if to say, if you don't know the difference between right and wrong, uh, that's less bad. That's more bad. That, that makes you twice as dangerous, ten times as dangerous if you're psychotic and you don't know the difference between right and wrong. As an adult or a kid, we make the distinction in this society. Why? Evil is evil. Crazy is crazy. It's all the same thing. Anyway, sorry. I promised I wouldn't do that anymore. 22 till 12, Hollywood. Hello. Hollywood. George? Yeah? How you doing? All right. My name I is Joe, and I, I must commend you on your knowledge mm -hmm. of religion. And I have a question to ask you that I think you probably could be the only one can answer. I'll do my best. Okay, I have a female friend. I go visit her. She's a very Catholic type, crosses on the wall of the Bible. Right. And she has a daughter who lives with a man, and they're not married. Meanwhile, while this liaison was going on, they have two children. And then she tells me they were baptized. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, how could they be baptized if this is a result of a sinful relationship? Did they pay the uh, dues, the baptismal dues? Well she, well, she just told me this. She says, why should we punish the children? That was her answer. Now, I've spoke to a few people. And I get contradictory uh, answers. One woman told me, the fact is that the, the religion itself, the rules of the religion say that if this comes as a result of any illicit relationship, they cannot be baptized. 
Do you have any input? That's all I'd like to know. Oh, no, I don't have any input. All I know is this. If the church can make some money, they'll uh, they'll sprinkle water on it, whatever it is, if they'll get their money. And uh, if they can't get their money, it doesn't matter if the kids were uh, born of the Virgin Mary. They're not going to get baptized. That's all it is. But if, uh, if, the, if she, in other words, if the, she go to the priest in the church, wouldn't they, wouldn't they ask them if they were married? If they would have to lie, obviously, to get married. No, they're going to they're gonna ask them a uh, check or a uh, MasterCard. Do you have the money? That's what they're going to ask them. All the other stuff is a big pretense. They will make exceptions. They will bend the rules. They will do whatever it takes to get your bucks. Sure, you've, an- you've answered my question. No problem at all. Thanks a lot. You know, test that theory if you don't believe it. Anyway. 20 till 12, 560 QAM. Devo's Sony Sports Showdown. Are you up to the challenge? Saturday mornings at 8, only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. They play with each other naked in the street. Time once again for Dan Quayle's Family Values Theater, illustrating how to be traditional even in the 90s. Wasn't that dinner great, kids? Yeah, Mom, those are the best hamburgers you ever bought. Better than the pizza you had delivered last night. Well, what are you kids? What's up to tonight? Drugs? No, Dad. I've got my Bellini group and tomorrow night's lesbian scout. Uh-huh. Son, you need help with that scale model serial killer you're building? Some other time, Dad. Cindy and I are going shopping for condoms. Oh, sounds like you're getting serious about that girl. Oh, Dad. Well, I think your mother and I will relax and watch some porno movies. Gee, you two are the best parents a kid could ever have. Thanks, Dad. Oh, that's quite all right, dear. Thanks, Mom. That's quite all right, dear. Join us again next time for Family Values Theater, where life is a figment of the vice president's imagination. Sorry, and so is most of America in uh, most people's eyes. 15 till 12 on 560 WQAM. Hey, first time today I had to give the lines out. One call, and then we're going to go into uh, Forest for the Trees. That's the time-killing CD that I have today. Thank you, Tracy Neely. 5670560 oh, and pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. I figured that uh, people would not be done spewing, not by a long shot, about this issue. So maybe I was wrong. Well, you look like you were going to say something there, uh, Joe Castello. No. Okay. Uh, once again, it's Friday. What do you got for us tomorrow on the uh, Joe Castello Sports uh, Racing, the uh, Joe Show? The Joe Show, the motorsports extravaganza. Well, this weekend is the uh, Flamingo Grand Prix. You're not Hialeah. convincing me, son. You don't I'm, sound like it's very exciting. Well, it is very exciting. This weekend is the there Flamingo Grand Prix in Hialeah. Oh, right. And I'm going to be racing in a celebrity race against DJ Laz and other local celebrities, as well as other indie car drivers, who, which I plan to stuff into the hay bales. Okay. We're going to be talking about that. We've got Fred Simmons, the head guy from Pontiac Motor Division Racing Department. We're going to talk about uh, Pontiac Motor Division and you know all their racing stuff. And again, we're trying for Adam Petty. Uh, 3 o'clock today, in fact, you hopefully will help me get that interview. So Motorsports Saturday tomorrow morning should be very interesting. Great. I'll be here for you, son. 14 till 12, mobile in Fort Lauderdale. Hello. George. Yeah. How are you doing, man? All right. Hey, I'm, I'm just totally, like, the, the media is just, like, totally upsetting me because I'm being dumped on because I'm, like, a quote-unquote gothic kid or whatever. Oh, yeah, I love that. The, the gothic clothing is to blame now. I mean, the fact that these kids like to wear a lot of black and uh, and pierced things. I mean, and, you know, and, and the funny thing is, like, I've been into this for years and years, you know, and it's like they, they, these kids were into, like, the worst of the worst, you know. I mean? You know that we live in a crazy world, and any time well, something like this happens, you have a lot of people, and, I, and unfortunately, it's most of the people, the knee jerks, as I call them, that that like to just jump on and blame everything that's on the surface. Like, you know what I'm saying? Happened in, stuff, in, like, in like, Lily White. They're gonna run oh, around. They're gonna be taking all the black clothes out of their kids' closet. They're gonna rip out the Nintendo, uh, confiscate all of the Doom cartridges, throw the computer out the window. Uh, no more TV, and what's that going to do except create a really, really pent-up, frustrated right, teenager? There you go. Hey, George, more time class. Time. All right. Easy. Thank, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I love the knee jerks uh, because they're all they're doing is looking at what's on the surface, and you're as, as if if you took away all of these trappings and all of this stuff, it's going to change everything. There was crazy, hysterical mass murder long before any of these things existed. All of these things. They haven't been around forever, but murder has been. Has been around for as long as there have been humans. And that's the problem. What's everybody so pissed off about, especially in America? Why are you so pissed off? Why are your kids all pissed off? Maybe because they're spoiled, rotten brats, which is what the exchange students kept saying. Is that you, you people are jaded. You're spoiled. You have 
immediate satisfaction, immediate gratification for everything that you want, and you're still not happy. You're still all pissed off. And then we can get, you know, we can speculate all day long about why that is, lack of discipline, lack of appreciation for an honest day's work, overindulgent parents, whatever. You tell me. 12 till 12, Miami, hello. Miami. Hi, how are you? All right. I have two things. Speak up, please. Sorry, I have two things. Yes, sir. I have one, but go ahead. <laughs> First issue. Uh, the parents saw those children and allowed those children to leave their house every day. Uh, in in that abnormal way, they must have guessed something was up. Don't they look obviously in their, not? Don't they look in their garage and basement to see obviously if bombs are being? Clue. Obviously not. Secondly, every day they had to walk into the school, right past the security guards, right past the administration, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Seems to me they were sending a major signal. There were all kinds of warning signs as far back as a year, possibly two years. All the uh, children, all the children, right. the teenagers that were interviewed. Uh, all around these kids, they they all knew something was up with this. So we don't have to look too far, but actually that wasn't the main purpose of my call. If you'll allow me another moment. Please. I would like to register my abject disgust at the program, the TV program Nightline on ABC Channel 10 last night. Really? I was watching everything I could. What, oh, did you miss that? I don't I don't recall. I, oh. uh, we usually watch Nightline. What were they doing? Uh a a a a two city uh town meeting they called it mm-hmm. uh the bottom line it was an absolutely opportunistic disgusting uh, uh use of this situation to make macabre theater uh on t v in the guise of news. It was nothing more than than grand guignol entertainment. Uh, disguised as some kind of a semi-serious news show. Okay, your complaint is registered, sir. Thank you very much. I didn't see it, so I don't know, but obviously that's what the media does. Uh, You know, and the guys are reporting and informing us they're also going to do their best to titillate us because it's all ratings-driven. We all know how it works, right? We all know how it works. Miami Lakes, hello. Good morning. Good morning, man. Right. Uh... Just wanted to call and uh, tell you that uh, you can spew off as much as you want because uh, you know everything you've been saying is uh, absolutely right on the money. Well, you know? thank you. And uh, you really, uh, you really understand and know a lot about family dynamics and uh, you know all that good crap. Like I said, I just you know I'm I don't claim to be any kind of an expert. All I can do is is talk about my own experiences. And I had a really really good parenting experience at the hands of uh, my sister and my brother-in-law, and a really really bad parenting experience at the hands of my mother and the stepfather du jour. And, and I know what kind of an effect each of those uh, situations had on my psyche. When I was with my mother, I wanted to kill them, and, um, you know, if a couple other people died, in the, in, you know, along with them, so be it, because they, they made me feel miserable. Uh-huh. And, and my brother-in-law, you know, came into my life and, and made me a part of his life and, and, and became a, a friend as well as an authority figure, and that's what's got to happen. You, your kids are not going to start developing a life of their own and, and start becoming deviants without you being aware of it if you're a part of their life. Absolutely. It's not going to happen. You're going to know it. You're going to hear it first. You're the first line of defense, the family, especially the parents. You're the first line of defense between your crazy kids and the rest of us. You're right. Well, you can't, you can't protect us from your own children if you don't know your own children. Kids are either made or broken. Uh, they're good people or not by the time right. they're five years old. First five Absolutely. years is the most impregnable time of their life. Okay? No question. And that doesn't mean that it's too late beyond that, that, no. that, that interventions can't work, and if you change their... their uh, there's a situation that it can't work, but you're absolutely right. It's got to happen in those first few years. But there are a lot of sick people out there having a lot of kids that have no business having kids because they... Oh, no question. Because you know, that's, that's and and that's the root of the problem right there. The parents are the, the source of the problem. And right. it's not their fault because guess what? They are children of parents doing the same crap. That's right. That's and it goes all the way back how many generations, okay? As far as Traces I can back to the beginning of time for whatever that's worth. That's right. Thank you, sir. Okay. Absolutely correct. The cycle goes back for years and years and years. And again, there's no license needed. We were talking about licensing to carry guns yesterday. What about license to have a kit? We've got really stupid, irresponsible people having children who have no idea how to be parents, who some of them didn't want to be parents in the first place, but, you know, they got pregnant because they weren't taught about sex. They weren't taught that if you put device A into device B, you get a baby or a disease. 5670560, pound 560 on the AT&T wireless line. Mobile in Hialeah, hello. 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 Hey, how you doing? All right. Yeah, I can relate a lot to you about a bad upbringing. I had a pretty bad upbringing. As a matter of fact, this caused me to have a lot of problems here, you know, now. Right. Um, as far as uh, the things I do, the way I am towards people. 
But um, it's not too late to turn it around, sir. You don't need to license parents if if they just if they can produce good kids, then you don't have to worry about the guns. I mean, guns are just instruments. If there weren't guns, yeah. they would probably find something They'd else. They find a you. knife. They would use a board with a nail in it. Uh, you know, whatever. Trust it's me. If there's somebody the I wanted to harm, I can think of uh, lots of ways to harm someone. I don't have to defend on a gun. I agree. Depend on a gun. Can, depend on a gun. Can I change this topic real quick? Oh, whatever. That's it's wide open. I just uh, you okay. know. Okay, Neil was um a little upset. I would think yesterday of of a caller from Howard Stern who did that to the media. I don't know if the, you want the to Captain talk. Jenks thing. Yeah. What about? Yeah. Right. I wouldn't say that Neil was upset about it. We he just kind of went tisk 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 and shook I his was, head. Well, I was just a little surprised because Neil makes fun out about everything. I mean, yeah, but the, first of all, this was a, a, a large, the horrible Simpson. tragedy. This was a big, big tragedy, and it was right on, you know, the day of it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, not even, not even a week, not even a little bit of a mourning period before you start coming out with all the jokes. But don't you think if you start criticizing people for like that type of speech, don't you think you're getting close to like? You know, I think I think whatever, man. I think Neil can do what, whatever the hell he wants, and people will listen or not. Same goes for Howard. Same goes for you. Me. Guys have your own things. Me. Your guys' thing is to talk what you feel, you know, and not that's, that's just have it. anyone, you know. Because we have the First Amendment, so you know exactly. Let them say. Let them say. Let them all. Let me say tell you a good thing about a good thing about you is that at least you let the other person talk. Well, I'm still weak. One of these days I'll butch up. Thank you very much, sir. Six till twelve, five sixty, Fort Myers. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Um, All right. I was tuning in, and I've, I've I've heard some of the conversation, and I think one thing that is not being touched on here is the lack of discipline. That I was going to on guys, to that after after twelve. The lack of discipline. You know, Go ahead. This this is ridiculous. Today we have become patsies to our kids. Oh, you know, no I, question. You see it every day in the store, on the street. That's. What, I mean, I've seen kids literally go ballistic on their parents in the right. mall, and they're just like, Johnny, come on, please. You know, right. and when I was raised, if I acted that way, before we even went in the store, we got the lecture. Hey, That's right. Don't touch it. Don't feel it. If you can't buy it, leave it alone. Seriously. Okay. You know, and these kids today, they need a strong, disciplined figure in their lives. There's no it question. It only helps them. I'd That's rather right. teach my kids consequences than have the sheriff's department teach them consequences. That's right. You know, I mean, I'm so sick of this. This is ridiculous. Let's get back to... Raising our kids, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. I'm not some kind of religious activist or anything like that, but I do believe that if your, t- if your child is doing something and he shouldn't be doing it, a, a swift pat on his butt is not going to kill him. It's you, just you gotta re- do it. It's you... going to raise awareness in him, hey, maybe this is something I shouldn't do. That's you right. know, and these, today we just we give kids whatever they want. I mean, these, these kids had websites. They're driving right. BMW. Uh-huh. Hello? Okay. And, and they're no, still pissed no, off. Yeah. It, uh, where was the father? We don't know. We don't know, and they're not talking. Stuff in the garage. How no, in sir, the hell can you. you not hear this? That's you know? right. All right. Your, uh, your issue is registered. It's time for a break. I'll do a whole big uh, discipline tirade after 12. Four till 12 on 560 QAM. Don't- Coming this fall to CBS, it's Rescue 411. Rescue 411, hello. Help, help, I got a bomber and it's stuck in me. A <laughs> bomber? Where? In the bedroom. No, 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 where is it stuck in you? Listen, I need an ambulance quick. Well, well, what make is the vibrator? I, I don't know, it's inside me. Don't you have the owner's manual? Just a minute. It's Sanyo, it's a Sanyo vibrator. Uh, let's see, we have a San Pedro. No, it's a Sanyo. Oh, Santa Barbara. That's in the 805 area code. No, no. Oh, San Diego. Rescue 411. Quick, send an ambulance. It hurts and it's on full speed. From CBS. Oh, one moment, please. I guess I can just verbally do the ID. WQAM Miami, Fort Lauderdale. I'm just, you know, we were in the bathroom talking about this girl that they saw this morning. So we got distracted and got back in the break a little bit late, crossing the streams in the bathroom. So it's 12 noon, 560 WQAM. Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and the guy that called uh, right before the break was absolutely right about the discipline thing because you can't uh, you can't have one without the other. You have a two two part job as a parent, and you're not going to be able to achieve happiness in your life if you grow up to be a spoiled, rotten brat that that falls apart when you don't get your way every time. And there's a lot of those kids out there, and you all see them at the store. And let me tell you this: it makes it really tough on the rest of us who do try to. Um, 
keep our children on the straight and narrow, etc. and so on. When we go into a store or a restaurant or something like this and other people's children are running around like maniacs. And the daughter just came back at me the other day and, uh, and said, she's the only kid uh, on our block who has to ask permission to go into another person's house. Before she goes into one of her friend's houses, houses she has to come home and ask us if it's okay if she goes into that person's house. And, she, and none of the other kids on the block apparently have to do that, even the ones that are younger than her. And I said, well, honey, then you will be the only kid on the block that has to do that all the time, every time, until you're 18 and move away. Because we will always know where you are. And if, and if we go looking for you and you are not where you said you were going to be, there will be nasty, nasty negative repercussions. And again, I don't take the credit for being a good parent. I just copied my brother-in-law and my sister. Who, well, and it, was, and it mostly all came from him. Because Cubans, with all due respect, are not the best parents in the world. They overindulge their children. They don't discipline their children. And the boys especially are allowed to get away with whatever the hell they want, get away with murder, especially where Mamacita is concerned, typically speaking. That's not to say that they're all uh, bad, overindulgent parents. That's just uh, been my observation. But this uh, very American brother-in-law of mine, and, and my sister had four daughters with this man, and you wonder, how could they keep all of these children under control, all these children running around all over the place? And it was very simple. They weren't going to argue with them. Remember Schindler's List? Amon Get, when he shot the Jewish girl. I love that line. I've got to get it. i got to rent the movie and, uh, and put it on a drop thing over here. We are not going to argue with these people. As a parent, you should not be arguing with your child about something that you told the child to do. My brother-in-law, with myself, who, because I was living in that house, and any of his daughters, he... I, I, maybe like in all the years that I lived in that household, I heard him raise his voice maybe twice, maybe twice at me or any of the children because we wouldn't think of defying him. We wouldn't think of arguing with him or causing him to say something twice because the look in his eye and the fact that he was approaching us from wherever he was sitting quite comfortably let us know that this man meant business, that doing what he said to do was not an option. And, and these parents, I hear them saying things to their children over and over and over again. What kind of madness is that? Yes, Jeff? When you were bad, did he give you time out? No, he did not give me time out. He got in my face. He got in my face and, and said things like, excuse me, who is in charge in this household? And I'd be like, well, because he was a big guy. And I'd be like, not, not me. Right. Me or my wife, we're in charge in this house. We don't argue with you. We don't negotiate with you. We say, do this, and then you do that. And if you, if you want an explanation, we'll give you an explanation after you do whatever it was that we told you to do. If we say, come here, go there, stop that, do this. After you comply with the order, then we will explain the logic to you if, if you need that. But we're not going to argue ahead of time. We're not going to argue up front. We say, you do the first time, that's the way it works. The children's names meant come here. There was this, you hear parents yelling at their children from across the field, across the block. Bobby, come here, what? Bobby says, what? Come here, why? Because I said so. Why did you say so? You hear that all the time. No, 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 no. My daughter's name means come here. When I say her name, when she hears her name, it means come to where I am so that we can have a conversation. And sometimes they have to be reminded. You know, sometimes you call them, you know, a second time, and then when they get there, they're in trouble because they didn't come the first time. And you say, what does your name mean? It means come here. Okay, then. Why did I have to reiterate? Why did I have to say your name again louder? Why are you making me, you know, scratch up my throat? Why are you making me be loud in front of the neighbors? You know, and, and, and you have to be that way. You don't have to hit your child. Like I said, I, I smacked my kid on the butt maybe three times in her entire lifetime, all before the age of like four, and only when she would get in my face defiantly, questioning my uh, authority. is the only time that it ever came up. And, and it's never come up again because once your child knows that you're serious, you don't have to raise your hand to your child anymore as long as you've been consistent, always consistency. And when you break the consistency one time, that's it. That's it. Good luck recovering control of your child again from that point on. Your child knows how many times you will tell it to do something before you're serious. Some people it's five, some people it's three. Make it one. 
It should only be one. Tell your child something once. If they don't comply immediately, you have to get up off the couch. You have to put the remote control down and get up off the couch, which is an agonizingly hard thing to do. No one's ass is stuck to the couch tighter or firmer than mine. Trust me. My ass is super glued to the couch. An earthquake wouldn't get me off the couch. But for the first three, four years of my child's life, because I saw my brother-in-law do it and I saw the, the effect that it had, I did it at home and, and you know, caused the wife to do likewise. And it worked. What do you know? It worked. And that's what you have to do. And it's a positive, negative thing. When your child does something good, praise, reward. Praise, reward. When your child does something bad, no yelling, no spanking, no nothing. When your child does something bad, it's time to have a talk. But you can't let it go. Whatever happens, you just can't let it go and ignore it. You can't just get into a big screaming match. 7 after 12, 560 QAM, Coral Springs, hello. Good afternoon, George. Good afternoon. First time being able to speak with you, and it's a pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to put in my uh, two cents on this uh, tragedy that happened. Go for it. And I hope that I don't have to give uh, change back. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm not saying necessarily in this particular case uh, as far as parents go because uh, pretty much I've been listening to you all morning, and I do uh, pretty much 100% agree with you uh, on the things that you have said so far this uh, this morning, mm -hmm. but uh, no matter how good parents are, I really and I am not a parent. There's, there's no guarantee. I'm not saying that there's a guarantee. We're talking about reducing the margin of error. That's all we can do. Okay, I, and I understand that, and I I realize that. But as far as um, people, you know, whether it was these parents' faults or or not these parents' fault, um, you know, there are a lot of kids that maybe aren't loved as much as maybe they could be or even should be that don't, you know, don't turn no out. No question. To, to I, I, weep, like I weep for those kids. I've been there. And uh, I just feel that, uh, you know, I, I hear a lot of these people on the news and a lot of people on this show and other talk shows and things like that saying, well, it's all the parents. It all comes down to the parents. And, and I just want to say that I, I think that's a load of crap. I really do because no matter how good of parents that people, that parents might be, your kids can always hide things from you, which is it's unfortunate, but it's true in, in this world. It is, and they can. We, we just, I think everybody, what everyone is wondering about in this case is that there was so much that they seemed to be hiding. Like they couldn't have picked up on any part of it, not the website, not the, uh, the, the explosives, not all the ammunition. I mean, they had to have known about something unless they were just never there. That I would part of their children's lives. That I would agree with you on. With with all with all that. I mean, we're not talking about a couple of playboys under the mattress or anything. Here. Correct. Correct. I th I, I would think with all that you kind know, of, of stuff going on. A couple of smoking a joint behind the barn. You know, we're not talking about a few little things. You know, you know, sneaking the rubbers around. You know, having. Correct. Sex. You're this, is, this is this campaign. They they obviously this was planned. Uh, you know, for a long time they stockpiled materials. They practiced. They, you know, they. I mean, how can you have so much hate as a as a child, as a young person, as a teenager, and and your parents aren't aware of it? Well, I mean, I don't know. See, see, they're not talking. We don't know what's going on. It's real easy for us to second guess what was going on in that household. Very true. Very true. But it, even in all the other cases, uh, you know, uh, those households. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, well, leaving guns where where children are, anyways, or even close to children. You know, children are very interested. Well, the one kid went out and bought it. Nobody left a gun where he could find it. He went out and bought a rifle at a gun store, legally. Speaking uh, in, this case, in this case, correct? Right. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, obviously, everyone should have their guns locked up. If you've got unlocked guns in your house, you're a lunatic. You're asking to be blown away by your own children or by a criminal. Hey, look, if somebody breaks into your house, free gun. I'm going to shoot the owner with it. I mean, of course you've got to have locks on your guns, trigger locks, cabinet locks, safes. I mean, that goes without saying. And just one last thing, George, this yeah. might sound uh, rhetorical or, or ridiculous, but I think, you know, I, I love classic rock and roll. I love class. I know you listen to classical music. I sure. enjoy classical music very much, sir. Mm -hmm. But I think some of this uh, music out today with this uh, real heavy death metal kind of, uh, now I'm not saying that any songs give you a reason to hurt someone, whether it's yourself or somebody else, but I really believe that... Uh, when you continue to listen to these certain kinds of, uh, I won't say satanic kind of music, but uh, 
to me, some of this death metal music today inspires nothing but racism and hate. Okay. And I think that's very unfortunate for the kids and also for the people who are uh, putting out that kind of music. All right. And I hope you have a terrific afternoon, George. You too. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, a lot of people feel that way about the music. I see it kind of differently. It's a symptom, not a problem. If your child is into, you know, carcass and all this death metal and things like that, then uh, it's time for you to pick up your involvement in your child's life and talk to them about their taste in music and why this music appeals to them. It's time to get a lot closer to your child when they, uh, when they start exhibiting those kinds of signs, like li- listening to a lot of the, the hate-filled music. Because I certainly don't believe that the hate-filled music causes anyone to do anything. It's out there, and you're not going to make it go away. It's another one of those elements that you can't do anything about. You're not going to make it go away. You can't disallow your child to listen to it. They're going to listen to it anyway, behind your back. you just got to be aware of it and... Uh, and, and share, share with your child, you know, find out what's going on in your kid's head. And these are little signs that tip you off that something's up with your kid. 12 after 12, 560, QAM. So these kids were listening to Rammstein. Did you know that? They had the interview with one of the other trench coat kids, and he held up his Rammstein TV. And so we listened to all this, you know, German heavy metal, German music. The guy, the previous caller, was talking about the, uh, the bad music these kids were listening to. So I thought I'd play a little Ron Steen. So the audience to the people that missed that little half hour show that I did once while I was playing this stuff before. Lots of images of uh, death right here on the CD cover. The band has got barbed wire on their lips, over their mouths. They've got their lips sewn and stitched and uh, lots of crap. Yeah, Rob, Joe Castello was just appreciating it. And uh, you know what? My daughter listens to this when I put it in the CD player, and she's in the car with me, and uh, we listen to it. And, and you know, it's, obviously it sounds like angry music. We have no idea what they're singing about. You don't understand the lyrics. Maybe they uh, translated them or not, as the case may be. Instead of playing the whole song. No, I'll just play little snippets and uh, let people get to know what this is all about. Because there are a lot of people, again, knee jerks. We're going to blame the music now. That and again, chick sounded the music, hot. yeah, the music is just a symptom. It's not the problem. A song never caused anyone to kill anyone. No one ever listened to a song and, you know, blood started coming out their ears and they died. You know, the fact is, you've got to talk to your kid about, hey, why does this music appeal to you? If it appeals to your kid because it happens to be some, you know, decent tunes, and some of these are, then there's no harm in that. But if, they're, if, they're, if it's become some kind of an anthem form, then you need to talk to them about it. And again, taking the music away from them is not going to do it. They're going to grab it. They're going to get it somewhere else behind your back. And they're going to do it anyway. They're going to do whatever the hell they want to do anyway. You need to be involved. You need to know what's going on inside your kid's head, inside your kid's life, and, and share their music. If they're into Rammstein, then uh, sit around and listen to Rammstein with them and ask them, hey, uh, what do these lyrics mean? What's this all about? Why, are, why is this guy's uh, lips uh, wired shut, wired open? Why does this man have forks in his eyes?
so anyway, there you go, 1220 on QAM. Uh, yeah, don't, you can't blame music. You can't blame music. And again, that's just another little hint that you can use as a parent. Is if, you know, if your kid's listening to that, if they're playing Doom, or if they have a swastika on their forehead, uh, you need to find out what's going on, what's going on inside their head. As a friend would, I guarantee you their friends know exactly what's going on inside their head. You know, but they're not talking. They're certainly not talking to you. They're not talking to their parents. You can't blame the music. You can't blame music for it. The music is going to reflect whatever's going on in the world. And these people, the Rammsteins of the world and Carcass and all the, the death metal, all the hate metal people, all they want to do is sell records to unhappy teenagers. And if you want to say that, yes, it flans, fans, the, flans the flames, flans the fames, fans the flames, well, whatever. The fact is you're not going to make the music go away and you're not going to keep your child from listening to it. There is nothing you can do to keep the music out of your kids' ears. You just need to take it as information and react to it appropriately and 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 there you go. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Hi, Leah. Hello. Hey, George. How you doing? All right. Love your show, man. Thank you. Listen, I, I've been t I'm listening to this since early morning and... Uh, uh, I think it's very sad what happened, and I think that uh, tragic, it's tragic, and what has happened with the youth of today, special, especially in the Midwest, like that. I think it's a culmination of things. I think that music has a lot has a lot to do with it. I think it has to do with also the fact media has a lot to do with it. it also has to do with with who the heroes of the today's youth are. Oh, there's no no question about that. We've spoken about that on this show many times. Yeah, about the, and, uh, uh, the false heroes that these children have, like the jocks and uh, and even movie stars and whatnot, fantasy figures. Right. Uh, for for example, the fantasy figures today are like like these guys have been around for a while already, but like Freddy Krueger and and people like the guys in the Terminator. And they admired Hitler. These are fictional characters. These kids were like into Hitler. Right. It culminated into something real. You know, it's a, from a fa fantasy figure into a real figure. And plus, it's the inability of the parents to tap into what what these kids are into these days, you know. And it's it's a culmination of all that stuff that leads to these violent acts. And uh, it's 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 an, it's many ingredients that culminate into one this one thing. That's that's my opinion on this whole thing. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, but and, but, but, and I don't know what that was. What what he was trying to say. Port St. Lucie, hello. Port St. Lucie. How are you doing, George? All right. Hey, I've been listening to your show this morning, right doing my uh, daily run around, and uh, a lot of the things you say hit right on the money. And I'm surprised more people, you know, have a problem with seeing what the media is just trying to make money off of this thing. There's no question. That's what the media. Media is a business. If you don't understand that, then then you need to go back to school or something. The media is a business, and they're going to put on as much gore, and they're going to they're going to you know hype everything up. That's what they do to try to get you to watch. And when people turn in, first thing they want to see is the body. Of course they do. That's if they, they if people see. didn't want to see the bodies, why are they slowing down on I-95 when there's a wreck? Exactly. And why are they going to go watch Joe Castello race on exactly. Saturday if they don't want to see bodies? Exactly. And you know, and I, you had a caller earlier that talked about the discipline. And you know that's a key issue. Also, another thing sure is, is another thing is uh, with these kids. I have to go back to how I was raised, like he did, and we were raised not only with discipline but to respect life in general. Right. There's none of that today at all, at all. At, at I mean, from day one, when you watch what these kids are getting into, and I'm not saying that all of them are off the deep end, but they are so quick to settle things with their fists or with whatever they can put their hands on. Right. And for me, I grew up in the inner city, so unfortunately, things like that, this, that I'm real. not, you know, no big shock to me. Right. But the way the media plays it, oh, it's another uh, urban town, or it's another town, a uh, small town. And and this wasn't a small town. This was a suburb of Denver. And it shouldn't make any difference what town it's oh, No, it shouldn't, but it does. It does. That's it's really does. unfortunate. Yeah. Hey, I just hope they can really find out the uh, true people that played the part in this role in the end. I, I have a feeling that they will. All right, thanks a lot. You bet. Thank you very much. Uh, definitely there were more people involved than uh, just these two kids, and I'm sure it's only a matter of time before they round them up. This was way too big for it just to have been these two cats. What do you think? That these guys acted alone? You don't believe that, do you, Josie? No. No. No, there were other kids involved. Uh, you know, and, and hate spreads, hate breeds. It's that cycle I was talking about earlier. And these guys get into their little hate-filled groups and, and have a big hate fest. Which which is is nutty to me. I've got a tape at home, a, a skinhead tape uh, that HBO sent promotional stuff. We get a lot of promotional crap here at the station, and it was about these skinheads. 
and they followed them around for a while. They followed them from morning to night and in and, and, and their daily routine and everything like that, uh, getting together, doing their uh, their hate thing, and basically it involved getting up, drinking a lot of beer, uh, listening to some you know death metal or, or some German rock and something like that, and then talking about how they hate this one, how they hate that one. But in the meantime, not only were they not doing anything but pissing into the wind all day long and just talking about all their hate, you know, up until the point where it actually turns into action. But there's something else that I noticed that was absent in the uh, lives of these these guys on the videotape and these guys last night and all the hate groups that they've been focusing on in the news, by the way. Where are the girls? Where are the girls, man? One, every once in a while. Some every once in a while there's some skinhead, lesbian, fat, fat dykey, beard is there because she can't get anybody to pay attention to her. And... And I'm thinking, if there were chicks in these guys' lives, they would not be angry. I, I guarantee you. I guarantee you. What was a better time in your life than when you were a teenager having sex? You know? I mean, I, I, I enjoy myself at every stage in my life. Now, and I, I love my family life, and I love my daughter in the house and everything like that. Hold on a second. This is a, a decent part. Sounds oh, rude, doesn't it? No idea. Did he say Cluster? I'm sure all these songs are about putting all the blacks and the Jews into the ovens or something like that. I have no idea. I have no idea. It just sounds very cool to me. It just, you know, you get that impression when you listen to the music. But uh, there's no, where are the girls? When I was 17, I didn't want to... A, kill myself or anyone else because guess what? That gets in the way of getting laid. Tell you what, if I do a horrible and that nasty thing, I'm going away to jail. I'm not getting laid by girls. You know, I, I wouldn't want to do anything that interfered with my chances of getting laid on the following weekend. That's what I lived for. What did you live for when you were 17? Well, when we were in school, occasionally that suburban angst would hit us and we would feel the need for a cause and some sort of thing to get behind. And you know what would snap me right out of that that quick? You'd see a chick. Christy Pierce walking by in her little cheerleading suit. Yeah, man. Suddenly, the priorities were totally Everything different. Everything else faded into Ooh. oblivion. Nothing else mattered. But, but, but getting closer to that. Yeah. You know what I'm thinking? All the, these guys put a lot of time and energy into the crap they were doing, their website and, and all their hate and all their thing. Where were the girls in their lives, man? The one girl, they said that it was a date for the prom or something like that. She just said that they were a date, not his girlfriend, just a date. And he was a weird kid, and it really bothered him that the people were picking on him and, and all these things. I guarantee you, sexually active teenager is a happy teenager. I, you know, at least that was uh, the case when I was one. And, and the ones that weren't sexually active, guess what? They were pissed off, and rightly so. They had every reason in the world to be pissed off because they, were get, they weren't getting any. I'd be pissed off, too, if I wasn't getting any. So I don't know, 28 past 12, 560, stall, 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 one moment please, WQAM. We're looking at 10 inches. I had some real hard ones, but small ones, in red shirts in my life. Whoa, I was hung like a small fly. My along with injection gave me an extended will. Whoa, now it's long and wide. But now it's Way too big, it won't fit in any hands I put on. Oh, now it's too damn long. Oh, that's why I need that
25 to 1, 560 WQAM. Joey C. and I uh, were talking during the break about uh, what gave us hope for life when we were teenagers, and that's just the possibility of seeing Just the off chance that something might happen that weekend. And, you know, any time that, you know, because teenagers, you know, raging hormones and life changing, blah, blah, blah. I got sad. I got depressed. Every once in a while, I get angry, bitter, and suicidal. But then, like you said, something nice would walk by. And just the chance, just knowing that I was going to be roller skating on Friday night and there were going to be girls there, and just just the 1% chance that one of them might touch me gave me hope for life. You know, I mean, what? And, and where is the room for hatred, anger, and bitterness when you actually do accomplish that flesh on flesh contact? Why did I go to all those football games? To watch football? No, oh, no. No. I went to all those football games because there were girls there. Went to the roller rink because there were girls there. I wasn't at home watching football on Sunday afternoon because guess why? There weren't girls there. I was out at the lake. The lake du jour, whichever lake I heard during the week that everyone was going to be at that day. Because that's what you did on the weekend, you know, between between the weeks of, you know, in Montana. It was a very small lake going window, nevertheless. So, you know, like all the skinheads, all the hate mongers, again, the only girl that you'll ever see, rarely, when you see them is some fat shaved head bitch, who obviously none of them are touching, and she doesn't want to touch them because she's a dyke. So I don't know what's up with all these hate mongers. You know, y'all need to go out and get yourself some pussy, and then you won't be so angry anymore. It's as simple as that. And parents, by all means, don't get in the way of your kids and, and, and the, the pleasures of the flesh. And don't make them feel that it's wrong if they touch themselves. And, and if someone will let them touch them, you know, by all means. You know, the, the fathers, they high-five their sons and everything like that, but they condemn the daughters. And, and I have a daughter. And, and here's, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Just God, as God is my witness, as long as she can come home not pregnant and not diseased, as long as she uses those rubbers, I'll be happy. And I'll, I'm not going to ask. I'll put my hands over my eyes and my ears. Just as long as she can assure me that she's using those little raincoats, that's all I ask. You know, and, and, and you know, and I'm not suggesting that she's going to go out there and be a slut. There are sluts. There are non-sluts. And you know what? The ones that usually wind up getting pregnant or getting diseases are the ones that are not the sluts. The ones that only do it one time. Uh, had no intention of having sex. That's why they didn't carry birth control. But guess what? The hormones got the best of them on one particular occasion, and bada bing, they're knocked up, or they've got syphilis, or you know, or something that can't be cured or can't be treated. Twenty-two till one, five sixty, QAM, Miami. Hello, or I mean, the lady in Miramar. Sorry, wrong line. Hello. Hello. How you doing today? All right. Um, the problem I agree with you is not the music and it's not the TV. It's where the parents to say this is okay that you're watching. Now you're watching this, but do you understand that some of the things that they're saying are wrong? Right. I mean, that's, it's that's, like... That's the whole point, is the parental involvement. There is none. There is none. I mean, and where were these kids, 16, 17 years old, able to get money to buy guns? 17 and 18. They, they, and had, they had nice houses. They had decent cars. They drove to school in nice cars. They had money for a website. They had money for, for the gun. Exactly. So their parents are giving them, obviously giving them the credit cards. Or, or something where they had jobs. I mean, I didn't, I didn't even find that out. Did these guys I mean, work? I don't know. It don't was know. just, you know, you need to be, the, I'm not a parent, but it doesn't take a parent to know what a good parent is. No, so because we've, be all, we've all had parents. Exactly. And it's like, I grew up with a great mom, and you know, and it's like, I know what good parenting is, and I observe it every Okay, thank you very much. You're 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 breaking up. Twenty one till one on QAM now, Miami. Hello. Hello. Hello, George. Yes. Those two tunes you played earlier, who plays those? Rammstein. Rammstein? Yes. What's the name of the album? Uh you know, I wish I could read it. It's kinda of scrawled. Uh <laughs> Sen Sen sucked. That's what it looks like. Okay. That's what it's spelled like. It's uh Sen sucked. That's what it looks like. It's spelled in like uh, kind of German. It's uh it's a black it's a black disc, and it's got a guy with, uh, like, coat hangers twisted through his lips. What can I say? <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, go, go get it. Play it Bye. for your kids. Maybe they'll, they'll kill somebody. See, that's, that whole concept is wrong. Like a, a song like Marilyn Manson. Ooh, Marilyn Manson. The goth clothes and Marilyn Manson and the Internet killed these, these kids, all these kids and the teacher. Thirteen victims and then the two assailants. Finally, we got a final number on all that thing. It wasn't the music, people. It was not. 
Redlands, hello. Hello? Hello. I just called because, uh, you know, Ramstein and uh, Frontline Assembly and Leather Strip and all that stuff, It's I think it's great. You know, I just, I, you know, I work out to it a lot, you know, and uh-huh. it's, it's got a great beat for that sort of thing. And, you know, I really don't pay much attention to exactly what it's saying. You, you know? mean it doesn't make you want to go kill people, sir? <laughs> I'm a pretty happy say? person, you know. You're I, a pretty happy person. Right. And I like this. They sent it to me. I listened, uh, and I liked it. I played it. I shared it. I shared it on the air. I share it with the family. It's, they're good tunes. It makes you want to just jump around and have fun, you know. Just, uh, you know, right. it's not really something that you'd want to sit down and, you know, think bad thoughts, you know. it's. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much. Bye. You bet. We're not going to... People think that, you know, by taking the music away from their children that that's going to cure everything, like taking the guns away. Let's wave a magic wand, and let's wake up in a world tomorrow where the world is a cube, and the rivers flow upstream, and rain flows upwards, and there are no guns, there's no death metal music, there's no internet, there's no TV, okay? Is there still going to be anger? Is there still going to be hatred? Is there still going to be murder? Are you still going to have people taking sticks and bats and knives? There are no guns. We waved the magic wand and made the guns disappear. You know, how many things do we have to make disappear before there's no more hate in the world? Everything. Because guess what? The hate doesn't come from any of these things. It doesn't come from... All of these things. It comes from people. It comes from f***ed up people that for some reason or another can't seem to get it together. That have everything that, that anyone in the world would want. They have all of these things and they can't seem to get it together. You know, you can't raise your children in a plastic bubble in a rubber room. The world has guns and it has death metal and it has the internet and it has violence on TV and it has violence in the movies and you know what all of us were raised in this world and most of us we're just fine we're happy go lucky people we take it as it comes we don't you know have feelings of hostility and cuz cuz all of that stuff is not responsible all that crap is not responsible for people getting angry with each other and hating each other and killing each other it all starts small it all starts with someone flipping you off in traffic and then you take it out on somebody at work and then they pass it along to somebody else and on and on and on it builds until finally somebody will say something to the wrong person who's having the wrong kind of day and then bada bing. That's what goes on. And if they have a gun, they'll use a gun and if they don't have a gun, they'll use a stick, they'll use a pointy stick or they'll use a piece of paper and cut your throat with it or they'll strangle you with their bare hands if, they, if you get them angry. And then we live in a hostile world and that's what we need to deal with, is hostility. I do my best. I'm not perfect. I, I flip people off in traffic. You know, and, and, uh, but I, I resist. I, I honestly do. I really, mm, I resist. And you know, and if I come into work and somebody acts like an asshole towards me, more than half the time, I let it go. More than half the time. And I, and I want to make it all the time. That's what I'm trying to accomplish in my life, is to make it all the time so that I don't pass pass it along and keep the cycle going that way. I, what I would like to accomplish in my life is when I get to work and somebody acts like an asshole, I'd like to be able to stop and say, hey, are you having a bad day? Because I know I didn't do anything to you to elicit that kind of a statement or a response. So what can I do to make your day better? Because obviously you're having a bad day. I want to be like Big Fat Gandhi or Little Skinny Gandhi. He was a skinny guy. That's what I want to hope to accomplish. That's what we really need to work at so that the people don't get to the point where they get pissed off enough to, to kill people. Kill people. I mean, they didn't know all these people that they were killing. I guarantee you in a school of 1,800 kids in South Miami High, we uh, had 2,300. 2,300. That's, that's ungodly. That's more than the people that lived inside of the town of Libby, Montana. That's bizarre to me. 17 till 1, 560 WQAM. <laughs> Get it first with the hammer, Hank Goldberg. Weekday afternoons at 2, only on Sports Radio 560 QAM. The makers of Pecorino Cottage Cheese are proud to present... Oh, wait, I didn't want to play that. Wonderful. One moment, please. I don't give a rat's ass about him. I want to love and call the Aussie way. 
when she suits your Uzi, and then I'll give it a blow. In the morning it gets as big as this, at least until you take a piss. I want to wrap my lips around your pulsing tube, and make your wonder warm explode with blue. That's a miracle, and it's uncircumcised. Eleven to one on five sixty WQAM, and uh, yeah, I can't help but feel that that's a like a personal dedication to me that song, since the people that that did it both know me, although they haven't all seen my penis. Mobile in Miami, hello. Mobile in yes. somewhere, I don't know where it yes, is. Yes, in Miami. I just said Miami. Mobile in Miami. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, I agree with a lot of stuff that you're saying. You, you kind of hit a nerve with the parent stuff and the parenting. Uh, some of the callers and yourself hammering the parents. Yep. Let me tell you something. There are a lot of parents out there that work very hard. And oh, no, teach, no and, question. They and teach their children there. love and, and teach them not to hate. But, you know, at some point, the children have to take, when they become young adults, responsibility. Right. There's These no guarantee. Are, There's no guarantee. Okay. Some parents are great. They can do okay. everything. We're just talking about, you know, you can only do so much. Exactly. We all know that. And another point that I wanted to touch on very quickly so that a lot of parents out there don't feel bad. Parents uh, basically ha have their hands tied behind their backs nowadays. Okay. More and more. Uh, yeah, yeah, I okay. noticed the children, that. Like, the children are an authority. Uh, right. They know that they There's can do anything they over want, spanking? and then all they What's have to do is pick there? up the phone, pick up the phone, and say, "Hey, my parent, this, my parent, that." Right. Another thing, if you go back to the Texas where they killed this uh, black person, uh, and they dragged him in the in the street, yeah. and they tore off his neck. Uh -huh. uh, if you looked at that father in that wheelchair, he taught his, he tried to teach his son to love other people. Okay, he tried. Now, where did he get this from? His peers programming, you know, and that goes all. At some point. Nobody's talked about these kids. They're 18 years old. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. Right. You know, they, they took that responsibility, and if anybody's to blame, it's them. You know, you don't know about them. Oh, no, we're certainly, we're certainly blaming them, but again, you know, this didn't just happen no, all I by itself. No, I agree with you. There were warning signs all over the place. I'm just saying that there are a lot of people that call and say, well, where are the parents? You never know. The parents might have been sleeping. I mean, these well, are you senior... Well, obviously, they were sleeping, uh, you know, they were sleeping in. Yeah, well, they were sleeping in, or they might have been sleeping out. We're talking about 18-year-old kids. Right. Okay? All they right. can't be babied all their life. That's right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That's, you know, there's no question that there are a lot of great parents out there. They do everything that they can do, and the kids still turn out to be pieces of crap. We all know that. You know, but again, there just seemed to be a certain level of oblivion. I can't shake that. You know, if, if you're involved with your children's lives, and I know that a lot of work, you know, they work hard. Sometimes they work two jobs, blah, blah, blah. You know, I was a latchkey kid. For, for a long time, from the time that I was eight years old on, et cetera, and so on. And, uh, you know, who knows what would have happened if it had continued that way with no involvement, because I, I certainly had a, a level of uh, bitterness and anger. And let me tell you, there's nothing more dangerous than a pissed-off little guy, because I can't go beat people up. I have no option but to go get a gun or, or make a giant bomb. That's the only, thing, well, that's the only way I'm going to get my revenge. Uh, you know, I couldn't beat up a fruit fly. So it has to be mass destruction, and those were the lines that my thought process has operated on when I would get angry and bitter until it all came around, until, until I started getting laid, until I started, you know, getting into the outdoor stuff. Boy, Montana cured me of a lot of problems, and not, it had nothing to do with the Christianity either. It had to do with scene and, and the great outdoors. Let's th throw the great outdoors in there, too, so people don't think that that's all that, that was going on. So, yeah, we know that there are a lot of parents out there doing their best, but again, and I, I can't stress this enough, if you're not involved in your kid's life, if you're not involved in doing with what with your kid what your kid thinks is fun, not what you think is fun, but what's fun to them, and, and if you're a friend to them, and if you're someone that they can talk to, then you'll know what's going on. Then you'll know if they're unhappy, number one. Then you'll know if they're getting angry. Then you'll know if they have feelings of hatred. You'll know if they're stockpiling ammunition. 7 to 1 on QAM, Mobile in Coral Springs, hello. Hey, you know, you're right. When I, when I, in Vietnam, they used to send the little guys, the little Marines, yeah. into uh, the tunnels, the tunnel rats, yeah. because those guys were fearsome warriors. I, I can't say that I'm a fearsome warrior. I'm just telling you that, you know, when you don't have one option, you'll go to another. Well, maybe we ought to bring back the draft. I mean, if these uh, angry young boys keep killing themselves, where are our next Marines going to come from? I don't know. In prison, maybe. Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. That was uh, quick and sweet. I think, why can't I hang up on it? Mobile Implantation, hello. Hey, how you doing, George? All right. Listen, I think the world would be a better place if we all listen to the Backstreet Boys. Oh, okay. 
All right. All right. Take care. That's it. Yeah, boy, the Backstreet Boys. That would, that you know what? That would make me want to kill. I take back everything I said about the music. If someone forced me to listen to Backstreet Boys, I would become a, a homicidal maniac right on the spot, starting with the person who was making me listen. Hollywood, hello. Hey, yeah, uh, I agree with what you're saying about the little guys, too. I mean, I was one of those guys that kind of get picked on, and, you know, it's cool. I, yeah, I didn't get picked on a lot back. because, really, I never gave people a reason to pick on me. That, that didn't work all the time because right. they're just assholes that'll pick on whoever is handy. Those are just the bullies, manly. That. They're and, bullies, you know, yeah. people with small penises who, again, right. you have to ask yourself, why are these people so unhappy? Well, you're not like, big enough to these fight jocks, back, you're going like, to turn away example, rather than get your butt kicked. Right. The jocks that were, that were picking on the trench coat people that were throwing them up against the lockers and throwing garbage at them, what was bugging them? What's, what's up their butt? Here you are, again, part of this school, part of suburbia. I assume that if you're a jock, you're popular, you know, you're doing great, you're getting laid. What are you all pissed off about? Well, you're I, picking I on these losers. If I had a gun, I, I don't think I would have used it, but I, I would have threatened somebody. But, you know, then again, that's, you know, I just wish it was bigger so I could have kicked some more ass. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, turn tail and run in when you can't fight and you're going to get your butt kicked is the best thing. But as far as the guns go... Like you said, you could pick up a pointy stick. Well, it's a lot easier, I think, in that respect. And I don't think we need to get our guns taken away. You're not gonna, that's, that's, of, a, that's like such a futile uh, pissing into the wind yeah, argument. I don't think we need our guns taken away. I, I just think that, that maybe they need to limit you know, the age. I don't think even in different parts of the country, a 16-year-old needs a gun. I mean, you know, if you it's not a matter of need. You're not going to change the way any of these people feel about the guns. You're not going to. I realize that it's a lot easier to to move out of the way of a pointy stick, or even if you get stuck, chances oh, are yeah. you know die aren't too you know too great. You could throw a chair at somebody, a computer monitor, anything you got. Yeah, but it's the, hard but to the run point is, you're, you're not going to take a gun away from anyone. No, we, we can argue we about whether or not it's yeah. the answer. You know what? It can't happen. It's never going to happen. We don't want to take the guns away. Maybe just like limit the age that somebody gets hold of one, and, and maybe make sure they're responsible That's fine. enough to use it. No problem with me. Thank and, you very and, much. And require gun training as well. I mean, for every weapon. Hey, I had it. Yeah. I don't have it. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. No problem. You're not going to change these people's minds and their attitudes. 14 years old, Hunter Safety. That's how old I was when I took Hunter Safety. And that's how old you can be uh, in Montana to walk around in the woods with a gun shooting at stuff. 14, as long as you've had your Hunter Safety course. And I had my certificate and my patch for my sleeve, et cetera, and so on. And for a lot of these parents and their, and their sons, this is a bonding experience. This is a tradition for them. This is something that they do. And they're going to fight you if you try to take the guns away from their teenagers. What, call it insanity. Call it whatever you want. I'm not advocating it. I'm just telling you that's the way it is, and you're not going to stop anyone from doing anything. I'm going to take that break, Joe. What are you turning back around that way for? Look, he's not even listening to me. What if I take the break right now? Go ahead. I'm going to take that break now. You can go back and uh, put your finger on the button. 4 till 1 on QAM. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I was calling about the wabbits you have for sale in the paper. Okay. What kind of wabbits are they? Okay, I have some uh, lops. Yeah. And I have some lops, some spotted lops, and some solid color lops. Oh, wonderful. And I have a, a straight ear doe, and I have two dwarfs. A widow dwarf? They're small rabbits. Oh, okay. Uh, we have a farm. Uh huh. And we like to play with the wabbits on the farm. Uh, you wouldn't happen to have any, uh, like, little wabbit handcuffs? Any what? Little handcuffs for a wabbit. Handcuffs? Yes. I'm sorry, I never heard of them. What, uh... Well, you, we, we use them when we hunt them on the farm. We like to hunt the wabbits. And we take them and nail them to a tree by their ears and then skin them alive. Uh... They're what? Whoa. No, I, I, if, if that's what you're going to do at these rabbits, sir, I couldn't say you're a rabbit. We, we have.